Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18. Did I say 8? Apologies, 18. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says, But the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. That the path of the just is in the similitude of a shining light that shines ever brighter, some versions will say, unto the perfect day. In redemption, all believers with no exception, please pay attention, all believers with no exception have the heritage and the destiny of the glory that excels. We call it the ever increasing glory. Are we together? The Bible says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then it says, We all with unveiled face, beholding him as in a mirror, the glory of God now, it says we are changed from glory to glory. So advancement and excellence is the heritage of the believer in Christ. You have to understand this. On account of... I hope you realize that the Christian faith is predicated upon Jesus Christ who came as a revelation of the love of the Father. The foundation of the Christian experience is not just God, it's Jesus Christ. Sent. The Bible calls him the express image of the invisible God. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. It says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake through the prophets had in these last days spoken to us through his son whom he had appointed to be heir over all things. Are we together? And then the Bible calls him the express image of the invisible God. So the foundation of a believer's journey starts with Jesus Christ not miracles, not signs, not wonders. Jesus Christ is the foundation, the focal point, the epicenter of the Christian experience. If for any reason you route your Christian experience through any other angle, miracles, signs, wonders, breakthrough, eventually you will collide with error. The journey has to start with Jesus Christ. All the other provisions will come on the way, but he becomes the foundation and he becomes the focal point of the Christian faith. Are we together? That means every other thing we are going to discuss in this conference and in any sermon must be derived from that standpoint. It is because of Jesus and the possibilities that his death has provided, his burial, his ascension, his exaltation. It is from that standpoint we can now begin to examine the implication of what happened when he died and resurrected. Are we together? Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, the Bible says, Paul speaking to the church in Ephesus. He began to mentor them and he said, Blessed be the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Who had blessed us. Are we together? Blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Not some. All spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. You have to understand this. So, we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings that reside in the realm of the spirit and only routed to the saints through the office of the Christ. That means you cannot obtain any true spiritual blessing in isolation to Christ. He is the door, he said. The door that opens you up. A door means an authorized channel. If a visitor comes to your house through a window, he's in your house but he's not invited. Because the window is not the way to get into the house. Is that true? When a visitor passes through a door, that means that he is welcome. That means he passed legitimately. Are we following tonight? Right, so I said all that to let us know that in Christ, listen carefully, we have the destiny of the glory that excels. It is the will of God. Listen and pay attention, please. It is the will of God that my life and your life should demonstrate the excellence of the kingdom. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. Paul again was mentoring the church in Ephesus. And he began to tell how that when you read from verse 3, the point of emphasis is verse 10, just leave verse 10. But from verse 3 he says how that by revelation, this mystery was given to him. Is that true? That in times past, in other ages, it was hidden. 
But in these last days, he had revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Verse 10 says, to the intent. That means, this is the whole goal behind all of this. To the intent that now, that it be known to principalities and powers by the church. That there be a demonstration of the multidimensional, multifaceted wisdom of God. Romans chapter 8, when you read from verse 18 and 19, the Bible says, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Then verse 19 says, For the earnest expectation of creation awaited the manifestation of the sons of God. One version says, Creation is waiting for God to reveal those who His sons truly are. Apostle John was teaching and he says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. He says, Now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. So we have been called into a life of excellence. We have been called into a life of glory. Advancement is part of every believer's heritage. Enlargement is part of every believer's heritage. If you do not believe this as true, the grace to walk in it is never released. You have to understand this. The assignment of the anointing is to validate the word of God. That means if there is no sent word, the anointing has no assignment in your life. The anointing has the singular assignment of bringing expression and validity to the word of God. The assignment makes the word to always look and remain true. That's the assignment of the anointing. So if there is no sent word, the anointing is barren. We have been called into the life of grace and excellence. Never allow anybody preach you out of this truth. That in Christ, according to the authority of scripture, that is greater than the opinions of men, that is greater than the sentiments of religion. Let God be true and every man be a liar. The word of God is very vocal as to the fact that in Christ we all have a holy calling. Is that true? The Bible says that we are a royal priesthood and holy nation. It calls us a peculiar people. It says we have been called out of darkness into light. To reveal the glory, the excellence of God. So advancement is our heritage in Christ. Enlargement is our heritage in Christ. Biology shows us that wired into man and creation is the instinct and the mandate to multiply and to increase. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, are we still together? The Bible says when God made man, when he got to verse 26, he says, And God said, Let us make man. The word there is the word Eloha. God said, the singular, the Godhead said, Let us make man in our own image and let that man be after our likeness. What does it mean to be after the image of God? The spiritual character, the glory of God. Then the likeness of God means to function like Him. Two hands, one head. Are we, that is the likeness. But the image of God is what Satan was looking for. You see. Satan already had the likeness of God, but he wanted the image. So the Bible says that he gave us dominion. Pay attention, please. He gave us dominion when you read from 26 down to 20, 28. He blessed man, Adam, dark earth. When he blessed that man, the woman was still in the man at the time. And he gave them dominion over the birds of the air, the fish of the sea. Now listen, the instruction was be fruitful. Then multiply. Then replenish. Then subdue. And he says to have dominion. So part of the dominion mandate necessitates enlargement. It is disobedience to remain at the same level. Are we together now? Please pay attention. It is, it, is not, it is not an issue of showing that you are moving well. A command was given. And the Bible says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Faithful to the call, faithful to the command. Are we still together? 
the instincts to enlarge so when a woman takes in a seed from her husband without any effort on her own part the seed begins to grow is that true and to occupy the entire space of the womb as at the time of the arrival that seed is something that may not even be seen with the natural eye but then because of that dominion because of that command because of that character of god to enlarge the seed begins to enlarge until after nine months you now don't have a tiny seed again you have a full grown baby and you would think that's the end of the enlargement when the baby comes out of another environment the enlargement continues are we together now yes. luke chapter 2 and verse 52 speaking about jesus himself the bible says and jesus increased he enlarged he increased in wisdom in favor the bible declares are we together in stature and then in favor with god and with men even jesus the word of god he increased in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men let's run through a few scriptures to convince us and to rest that case once and for all that it is god's desire for us to increase that means it is never god's desire for you to be at the same level where he started with you listen in the parable of the talents matthew 25 just give it there we're not reading it the bible says that he gave on to one three men is that true he gave on to one five talents he gave on to another two talents the last he gave one talent and then the bible says he went and allowed them to do whatever they wanted to do with it the one with five talent did something and expanded he increased he had five more the one with two had two more but the one who had one even though he had only one at least he did not lose that one you think he will be commended for at least still having that one left when the master came back and demanded accountability the one who had five had five more well done thou good and faithful servant hallelujah sorry about that in one of the synoptic accounts you would see that the reward given to them was authority over greater kingdoms greater territories was the reward that was given to them and then the one with one talent here's what he said he said i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you did not sow and so i thought instead of doing this i i buried it in the earth and he looked at him and he called him number one wicked number two unprofitable that means god never expects anything to remain the way he started it if god gave you a mind he should not see you at that same level god is a god of motion god is a god that moves he does not remain at the same level the only thing that is consistent is his character but as far as the vastness of his glory is it is ever increasing worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb that was slain worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb that was slain by the time john would see the same jesus who mentored him on earth in the book of revelation it was another level of glory it was not the same glory he saw john saw him in the isle of patmos and he said you mean this is the man that i walk with god should never find you at the same level spiritually financially in your influence it should never be that you should be at the same level listen as a man of god the grace that was upon you when you started should not be the same level of grace that grace and peace can be multiplied Your wisdom should not be at the same level. Your influence should not be at the same level. The access to resources that you have should not be at the same level. Your comprehension of spiritual truth 
should not be at the same level. Let's look at the following scriptures very quickly. Am I wasting your time? Psalm 115 verse 4. Please write it a, a little Bible study now. Media, please help us as much as you can. Psalm 115 and verse 14. 115 and verse 14. I may not be able to turn to them, but if we can have them projected. Thank you. God bless you. Read it with me, please. We'll be reading it very quickly. Ready? One, two, read. It says, the Lord shall increase you. It never said more, just once. The Lord shall increase you more and more. And your faith keeps adding more and more and more and more and more. The Lord shall increase you. Someone prophesy. Say, the Lord, the Lord shall increase me more and more. Forget about what your bank account is saying. Forget about what your village is saying. Just prophesy. The Lord shall increase me more and more. Please sit down. Isaiah chapter 54, please, from verse 1 to 3, very quickly. Please write it down. These are scriptures. You see, the basis of our confidence in the faith walk is not just the speakings of a man of God, but the scripture. Don't just believe because you like and trust who is speaking. You must believe because it is truth from the word of God. This is why I am running through scripture. I already believe what I am telling you. But I need you to believe it. Psalm 54, from verse 1 to 3. 1 to Read, Yola. Sing, O Barim. Oh dear. Just, just start from verse 2 since you're already there, please. Let's go to verse 2. We're reading just 2 and 3. Psalm, you got it right. Huh? Isaiah. Did I miss something? Isaiah 54, forgive me. Isaiah 54, you were correct. Thank you. All right. Sing, O Barim, thou that didst not bear. Uh huh. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that did not travail with child. Why? For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Verse 2. Read if you are a Christian. Aha. Uh -huh. Spare not, lengthen thy cords and strength. May verse 3 be a prophecy for you. Go ahead and read. It said, For thou shalt break forth on the right and on the left. Job chapter 8, verse 7. Next verse. Hmm. Job chapter 8, verse 7. I'm showing you from the authority of Scripture. That it is in every believer's destiny, not the destiny of men of God, not the destiny of special people from wealthy families, from any village, from any city. Don't let nobody bully you through their orientation. The moment you are in Christ, you sustain the same potential if you believe to enlarge. And hear me, for those of you who may think. I'm coming from a background where I can't speak English. I didn't have the privilege to go to school. I bring you words of comfort. There is a God in heaven. And if you can place your faith, He will pick you from right from that village. That place where you are. Job chapter 8 and verse 7. Job 8 and verse 7. Go ahead and prophesy as you read. Ready? One to read. It says, though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end. Hallelujah. I know I went to a school where we sat on the ground to read. But don't be too quick to laugh at me. God is doing something. I know I came from a family where we go to the farm before we go to school. Though my beginning be small, I may not look like it, but the Spirit of grace sustains the ability to enlarge you. That one day when you tell people, this is where I came from, they will say, we can't believe this. That's why I sang that song. It is because the Lamb has prevailed. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is 
the land that was slain. Mighty, mighty is the land. Mighty, mighty is the land. Mighty, mighty is the land. Listen, I may not have any evidence around my life right now. My parents may be in a room where you can see the sky from inside that room. You may not even have any privilege as far as a sociological advantage is concerned. But right where you are, your first assignment is to believe that on account of what Jesus has done, there is an opportunity given to all men. Pay attention. Given to all men. Regardless your age. Regardless your gender. There is nothing like too late. Abraham started at 75. Never say it is too late. We are talking about the God of heaven. Are you following my discussion now? So please sit. Now that you know and you believe that in Christ, listen, do you know why we respect scripture so much? Because God is bound to his word, not to your needs. He is bound to his word, not to your emotions. He is touched with the feelings of your infirmity, but he only responds in honor to his word. So if the basis of your activity in the scripture is just, or in the faith life is just emotions, you may not get anything from God. Now when the devil tries to ask you what makes you think tomorrow you are going to be blessing the world from this village, you will sing this song for him. It is because that lamb has prevailed. He is worthy to open the book. And when the book is opened, crying and weeping stops. He says, weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed. Are we still together? So it is our destiny in Christ and being as simple as possible so that everybody can understand. Let me give us one last scripture. Genesis chapter 17. This was a promise that was made to Abraham and verse 6. Genesis chapter 17 and verse 6. Remember that every promise that was made to Abraham was made to Abraham and his seed, which was Jesus, not Isaac, his seed. And then the Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29, it says, If ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So we know for a shorty that everything we see God tell Abraham by the covenant of being grafted into Christ, that truth is applicable to us. This is doctrine. Are we together now? Genesis 17 and verse 6. Read it as though God were speaking to you. If you have it projected. Genesis 17 and 6. Genesis chapter 17 and verse 6. Do I turn there or do we have to wait? Okay, fine. Read with me please. One, two, read. Now, keep that scripture there. Hold on. Where you see thee, I want you to change it and put your name. Do you believe that? One, two, read. And I will make Joshua Selman exceeding fruitful. I really want you to believe everything I have been saying. Can I tell you this? God does not lie. Allah by our career. If He speaks, it is because He sustains the ability to make it happen. There are two people who will shout now under the anointing. Please bring them out. We'll continue, but I just saw a light. I just saw the power of God. There are two people. God is bringing mighty deliverance. I just saw that light. Please bring them out right now as I'm speaking. The mighty power of God is coming 
on two people. Bring them out. Hearing a name Jonah. Who is that, please? Jonah. We are going to sit down to continue scripture, but let's just honor what God is doing. I'm hearing a name Jonah. Who is, who is that? I don't know if he's a gentleman or Jonah. I just want to speak to that person right now. Jonah. Is there someone like that? Jonah. Listen, God does not play games and entertain people. No. Every time you see, remember you prayed and fasted and prepared. The power of God is coming on two people outside. Among these people at the overflow. I just saw a strong anointing coming on two people. This is a program that this territory will never recover from. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. Now in the name of Jesus, everything that represents witchcraft over this family, I stand by the God of heaven and I command it, let it be destroyed now. Let it be destroyed now. Here at the upper room cathedral, we take authority over everything that has kept these destinies and these families down. Now, let them go. In the name of Jesus. One of these, I don't know, I'm seeing light, just the ministry of angels, where these are mothers are. I'm seeing the power of God come on one of them. I don't know why, but I'm seeing there's something God is taking out right now. This is what I'm seeing. Help them, please. I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Just this row. This is what I'm seeing. I decree and I declare by the power that in the name of Jesus Christ everything that is not of God I curse it right now I curse it right now in the name of Jesus Christ hold the gentleman hallelujah okay it's the Lord. Hallelujah. There's a gentleman who is going to start running out now. Just hold the person and bring the person out. Whether you are an usher or not. This is a ministry of signs and wonders. So, it's, it's nothing unscriptural. We love Jesus Christ. The power of God is coming on a gentleman. Saying, please do not miss any session of this. Especially tomorrow night. Um, I trust that God will grant grace There are some of you who came here with hunger to receive Hunger to receive an impartation for your ministries Help that lady, don't leave them standing Help her please, so that they don't fall Ushers, just make sure you are around them Don't leave them standing Help them, so you yourself don't fall Victor, you may need to help them, eh? Just guide them on what to do I'm seeing chains and I'm seeing the number seven 
there are seven people under the sound of my voice i'm seeing chains around your hand right now we'll continue but the power of god is coming on all seven of them please bring them out here right now in the name that is above all names i come by the rod of the higher priesthood here at yola in the name of jesus every devil that has held anyone's destiny down let them go now help them please let them go now please whether you are an usher or not just help anyone under the anointing there please bring them out i decree and declare deliverance please open your mouth and begin to pray in one minute decree and declare this is my night of encounter in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Adamawa, a revival comes to your territory. In the name of Jesus, a revival comes to your territory. There is no planting and no skimming of darkness that will stand your way this night. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hold on, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you a pastor? This man on white. Hold on. You are a pastor. You have a church? Ah? Please don't see this as a distraction. Help us. Very soon they will be back to their seat. You organized a meeting with hunger and you asked the Lord to come and visit your territory. This is why he has come. Father, in the name of Jesus, every power that is not of the Christ, we command in the name of Jesus, they leave these families now. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Here at Upper Room Cathedral, in the name of Jesus, we bring liberty to these families. You are a pastor. From where? Oasis of love. Oasis of love. Can I pray for you? Because I'm seeing that God is... Stand up. I'm seeing God placing a teaching grace in a strong dimension. A teaching grace. I stretch my hands. May that power come upon you. You will never be the same. Take that fire now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ, now I decree and declare every family here represented that has been held by any siege of darkness be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. And every blessing that has been stolen from every family, their joy, their peace, we command a sevenfold restoration now. Let these families never be the same, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. We establish your victory. We declare that liberty is yours in Christ. Let it be so now. Let it be so forever. In Jesus' name I pray. Please be seated if you can.
Those that are fine, you can take them back to their seats. Don't lose touch of what we are teaching. We are still teaching. Every time the word of God comes, His power is also there to heal, to deliver, and to bless. Help them, please. Just help them. Listen, let me explain something. Some of you, I know that it's nothing new in the body of Christ to see the manifestations of the Spirit like this. But I want you to know that when God moves like this, um, here and there I know that there have been abuses of grace and there's been misuse of things here and there. But please, don't you confuse what is happening. There are people genuinely called of God who have paid their price with God in the Spirit. Are we together now? I need to say this so that you understand that... So that the next time you are praying and you are saying, God, come and visit our land. He really answers prayers. But you must be ready to receive the answer He is bringing. You will be amazed to hear the testimonies from these lives. Doors that have been closed, open. Age-long captivities, just like that. Who is like Him? Lion and the Lamb. Seated on the throne, mountains bow down, and every ocean roar to the Lord of Lords. We will praise Adonai from the rising of the sun to the end of every day. Praise. Adonai All the nations of the earth All the angels and the saints Sing praise As many of them who can return Just let them be But please be patient We are not wasting our time These people are not just making noise here God is helping them We declare your liberty For you you don't have to bring everyone who is under the anointing. Just help them, except I ask you to do so. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your families are restored. Your families are delivered. In the name of Jesus Christ. Alright, please sit down. Let's see if we can continue. Don't worry, they'll be fine. If you have a space to sit, sit. So we're discussing the subject of enlargement that it is possible for an individual to experience increase on all sides that means your spiritual fire when we talk of enlargement we are not just talking of physical enlargement when you grow and expand and increase spiritually when you grow and expand and increase intellectually when you grow and expand when your fire for God when the anointing and the engracing of the spirit upon your life steps into new horizons that is also enlargement are we together now but i want to point out something very important there for tonight i want you to know and if you can still hear me i want you to write this down there is a price there is a price for increase and for enlargement there is a price for increase and enlargement my assignment tonight is to number one open you up to the possibility of increase all wise but then in addition to that to begin to show you the conditions that must be met for an individual to step into it you want greater levels of fire greater levels of grace greater levels of influence please hear me there is a price and our inability to understand the price component of spiritual things is the reason why we keep claiming them and never walk in the experience of them there is a real price for fire there is a price for kingdom wealth there is a price for increase numerically geometrically there is a price for lifting 
there is a price. Are we together? Price number one. Let's redeem the time. What is the first price? If I want to enlarge, if I am tired of my current level, territorially speaking, if I am tired of my current level, spiritually, if I am tired of my current level, ministerially, politically, economically, what is the first price that must be paid to help an individual rise? Listen, God is answering your prayer now because some of you have asked questions. Lord, I am a man of God. I love you sincerely. But why do I remain at the same level? Even my church at the same level. Financially at the same level. Spiritually at the same level. After many years, nothing seems to change. There is a price to be paid. Price number one. Please write it down. The first price that must be paid is the price of correct perception. The price of correct perception. You want enlargement in your life? Correct perception. Jeremiah chapter 1, please. Give us verse 11 and 12 and then we'll examine a few more scriptures. Jeremiah chapter 1, 11 and 12. My goodness. The price of correct or accurate perception. Jeremiah, let's read if you can see it. Ready? Read. It says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, What seest thou? It's a question. Until then, he had proposed to him that right from when you were in your mother's womb, I called you, I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. And the young boy, Jeremiah, said, but I'm a little child. He says, say not that you are a little child. But everything I tell you to say, you will say. And to whoever I send you to go to, go to. And don't be afraid of their faces. And then verse 11, please look up. Don't worry, they will all be fine. Just look up. It says, what seest thou? And Jeremiah replied and said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Next verse. Verse 12. And the Lord says, Thou hast well seen. Thou hast seen correctly. In other words, you can see wrongly. There was a time that Jesus healed a blind man and said, What do you see? And the man said, I see men like trees. If Jesus had left that man like that and that man wrote a book, that man would call men trees. Perception. 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 Now keep the scripture there. We're not done. Please keep the scripture there. Jeremiah 1 verse 12. Thou hast well seen. As a result, I will hasten my word to perform what you have seen. Not just what I have said. The performance is over your perception. There cannot be an enlargement until there is a miracle of superior perception. Now hear me please, brothers and sisters, servants of the living God, co-laborers, politicians, those in government, listen carefully. Culturally speaking and sociologically speaking, every single one represented here, we come from different families, we come from different cultural backgrounds, and many times, because of our sociology, we have embraced perceptions. Listen carefully. We have embraced perceptions that have come either from culture, perceptions that have come from our failures, perceptions that have come from the way we were taught. Hallelujah. Perceptions that have come from our experiences. Look up, please. Chances are, if I grew up from a family and a background, where I never saw the hand of God to bring favor. I suffered for everything. I spent 10 years to finish primary school. Another 10 years to finish secondary school. Another 10 years to finish university. Another 10 years to start a job. If you ever hear a man say God can favor men, you may not believe it. Because your background did not capture that reality. If you have never seen the sick healed in your life, even though you know God heals the sick, 
chances are you will not believe that God can use you to heal the sick. Perception is important. The first price, if you are tired of where you are, and God wants to now lift you to a higher plane in the spirit, a higher plane in destiny, He does a miracle not to where you are, but He does a miracle to your spirit, He does a miracle to your understanding. The first price, the price of accurate, superior spiritual perception. Let's have the following scriptures down, please. Genesis chapter 13. From verse 14, we are reading down to 17. Media help us. Genesis chapter 13. This was Abraham and Lot. The Bible says that when God called Abraham from, just to give a little background, Lot went with him. And on account of that partnership, God began to prosper Lot. But a time came when the herdsmen of Lot and that of Abraham began to have a quarrel. And they said, we be brethren. There is no reason for this quarrel. Choose a choice land. And Lot made that choice and went to settle near Sodom. And when Abraham was left alone, verse 14 now, and the Lord said to Abraham, after Lot was separated from him, lift up now your eyes. What is the first thing responsible for your advancement? Your eyes, not your feet. The goal is to move forward, but it starts with your eyes. Your perception. He said, and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward 15 read with me please if you are a christian one to read for all the land which thou seest i will give unto thee and to thy seed forever keep that scripture there not the land that is available it is the one you see that i will give to you not the one that is available all the land which thou seest, I will give unto you and to your seed forever. Next verse, please. Verse 16. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then, thy, then shall thy seed also be numbered. 17. It says, now arise. Now that your eyes are seen, your legs can now follow. Your legs will always move in the direction of your eyes. If your eyes sees danger and a mediocre life, sees a ministry that cannot grow, your legs and your hands will move in the direction of that limitation. For God to enlarge Abraham, the first assignment was his eyes. I know you... Um, who is the man of God here? Any, my, no, no, don't worry. This man, you just lay your hands on that lady. Just do what I'm asking you to do. On her shoulder, just uh -uh, not her head. Just lay her hands there. Just do what I'm asking you to do. In the name of Jesus, I speak peace to you. Now. Help that lady, yeah? Someone, maybe get something and just clean her up. Ushers. Now, listen carefully. Everyone. So, the first price, watch this, is the price of what? Accurate perception. Accurate perception. Let me tell you this. It is difficult for God to do much with a man of God, with an individual, with a territory that limits him through their perception. The assignment of faith is not just to make you hear what God is saying, but to see what God is saying. Because you can doubt what you hear, but you can never doubt what you see. You can't say I'm wearing white. You can't say I'm wearing red. You can't say I'm wearing a suit because you are seeing. If all you are hearing is an audio, you may guess what would this man be wearing. 
Are we together? Perception. For a long time, God wanted to lift and honor Abraham. But Abraham could not carry the kind of perception that will establish him as the father of all nations. So one time the Lord helped him by bringing him out. He said, try to count the stars. He counted, he could not. He counted, he could not. He counted, he could not. He said, so shall your seed be. Finally, Abraham agreed with God. And the Bible says, God credited unto him for righteousness. Accurate perception. For all the land which thou seest, I will give unto you. Now pay attention. In Numbers chapter 13, we are dealing with the first price. We'll just take that one alone for tonight. Numbers chapter 13. Let's start from verse 1. This was the, a chronicle of what happened to the 12 spies. Remember that spies had been sent to go and spy the land. And i like us to examine the power of perception and its implication. They were about to possess a land. And their perception limited them. Ready? It's a long reading. Please be patient. Media will just keep walking together, please. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, verse 2, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Now, watch this. God is saying, I have given it all. But there is something you must do to step into possession of it. So he says, every man choose people to come. Verse 3. We'll see if we can jump a few verses. Moses commanded by the Lord now. And all those who are the heads of the children of Israel. Four. And these were their names. Please go to verse 7. Let's just jump their names for the sake of time. And of the tribe of Issachar, Egal, the son of Joseph. Aha, let's continue. I want to show you what happened when they were sent to spy the land. Of the tribe of Ephraim, Oshia or Jehoshua. This would be what we call Joshua, right? And of the tribe of Benjamin, Palti, the son of Raphu. Sorry about the whole chronicle. The tribe of Zebulun, Gadiel, the son of Sodi. Uh -huh. It's a long reading of the tribe of Joseph, Manasseh, 12. Let's go to 13. We'll keep moving until we're done with the numbering. 14. You see how long we're trying to jump this. Now, it says these are the names. Okay, just keep 17. It says these are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy the land. And Moses called Oshia, the son of Nun. He called him Jehoshua. That's where you get the word Joshua. Jehoshua. God our salvation. The one who saves. And Moses sent them to spy the land. And said unto them, Get you up this way southward. And go into the mountain. Eighteen. And see the land. What it is. And the people that dwell therein. Whether they be strong or weak. Few or many. And what the land is that dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and the cities that be, that they dwell in, whether they be tents or strongholds. And what is the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood or not, it says, be of good courage and bring the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first tribe graves. Watch this. So they all went, twelve of them, they searched the land from the wilderness of Zin to Rehob, as men come to Hamath. Next verse. And they ascended by the south and they came to Hebron and all these other places. They came down 23. They came to the brook of Escol and cut down from there a branch with one cluster of grapes. And they bathed between upon two staff and they brought the pomegranates and of the figs. Next verse. The place was called the Brook Escort because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down thence. We're reading to go ahead. And they returned. Now follow this now. So Moses sent them, go to the land, spy the land, a comprehensive search, and bring us miracles. Bring us testimonies. Alright? 
And the Bible says they returned from searching the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron the priest and all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. 27. And they told them, here's their report now. We came unto the land whither thou sentest us and surely it flowed with milk and honey and this is the fruit thereof. 28. Nevertheless, Ladies and gentlemen, look at the danger. Just lead them to their seats gradually. Right? You can just lead them quietly to their seats. The ushers can do that. Nevertheless, please look up. It says, The people be strong that dwell in the land of the cities and the, city, the cities of our world and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak, the giants now, there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites, the Jebusites, Amorites, in the mountains and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan Caleb kept quiet and was listening to the rest as they were reporting and the nation of Israel was becoming threatened and discouraged by the perception they were selling to them and Caleb shot them down at once said you are not the only one who went there we all went there don't generalize your interpretation you are not the only Nigerian we are all Nigerians you are not the only one who the economy is. The economy can be bad for everybody, but don't generalize experiences. This is what Caleb is saying. Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. Look at perceptions. Two of them went to the same place. They saw the same challenge. Their interpretations were different. Caleb said, even if you want now, we are ready to go. And possess it, he said. For we are well able to overcome it. But the man that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against these people. Why? For they are stronger than we. 32. And they brought up what kind of report? A poor perception. An unscriptural perception is called an evil report. They brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. I don't know where they saw this one in that journey. And all the people that we saw were men of great stature. Now, I'd like you to read this. Ready? I forbid this from happening to your life, but I pray that you read it now. One to read. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come out of the giants. And we were in our own sight. Stop, stop, stop. We were in whose sight? Not their own sight. We do not know what they are thinking about us. But based on what we think they are thinking, we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. So we were in their sight. They never had the opportunity to talk with the giants and say, what do you think about us? The same way you look at failure, you look at limitations, you look at ministry. For someone else is seeing ministry as an opportunity to serve the purposes of the kingdom from where you are to the ends of the earth. For another person, he's seen a burden that leads men to die, to bring failure and defeat. For someone else, he's seen a great life even in the midst of adversity, that when men say there is a casting down, for you, you shall say there is a lifting up. But for someone, you can sit down and allow life beat you left, right, center, and say, how can they have the The first key, if you want to rise to be mighty and to enlarge spiritually, financially, territorially, ministerially, listen carefully, is the price of accurate, correct perception. When we see wrong, we believe wrong. 
and we act wrong. Listen to me. There are many of you here who the call of God is upon your life. But based on your background, you have been told you can't serve the Lord. Leave all the people who came from rich families who have traveled to the U.S. and come back. You who has come from a village somewhere is not for you. Whereas you go back to bed and you see God telling you, I want to do more with you. You may look like you're a weak person, but there are destinies upon your shoulder. And whilst you are preparing, do you know, let me tell you this. Respectfully speaking, this is a plague in Africa. There can be an indigenous individual who has an idea that can transform a territory. And everyone will push them and say, no, we don't think this is nice. Someone will come from somewhere who was thrown from his own territory because of incompetence. But just because he carries a persona that is foreign, we will rush and, and attend to them at the detriment of the creativity within the territory. There are brilliant minds in Africa. There are mighty men and women of God in Nigeria. There are mighty industrialists in Nigeria. There are women of value and power in Nigeria. There are mothers with excellence and power. But our perception is what has stopped us from increasing. There are some of you, God has spoken to you years ago, that this ministry is going to expand by land. And at the time God spoke to you, you look at the size of the ministry, only 60 people. And you said, land for what? And had you obeyed God and bought land at that time, right now you will not be biting your finger in shame. There are some of you here, God spoke to you. I want to send you abroad. Try this scholarship exam. And you laughed at yourself. Ah, it's not for people like us. I am grateful with the little God has given me. Can I tell you this? There is a thin line between contentment and mediocrity. It is good to be contented. But mediocrity is a dangerous programming. And I say it respectfully speaking, not to insult. But, you see, arewa. We need the grace of God to help us to believe in ourselves and sustain the grace to expand our perceptions. It is true. I speak to you as though I'm speaking to family. You must believe God to be able to take you from where you are. Man of God, God can pick you right from this city. There is a grace God can place upon your life that will bring people all over the world to come it doesn't if you don't have to just go there there is a grace for where the carcasses are the bible says there the eagles will. but if you don't believe you can sit down there and continue to compare yourself with yourself and the bible says that is not wisdom i came to challenge you tonight if it is enlargement that you desire please hear me there is more that god can do in your life do you know many years ago bishop sir I was in one room one room it was from that one room i was having visions of the globe it was from that one room i was having visions of nations coming i would get up and from that one room i would write what i saw and i believed god that one day i will stand before presidents one day i will stand before kings when god said it i believed it how it will happen i did not know but one thing i know is worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. That one day I will be taking the gospel to the nations. That I will speak the gospel before kings and before nobles. How it will happen, I did not know. But I believed Him. Brothers and sisters, I bring you words of faith and words of encouragement. Some of you are standing here. You remind me of the Reinhard Bonke crusade many years ago. I was one of the people in the crowds in that crusade. I came there with hunger. I was already a man of God. But there was a dimension I did not see in my life and my ministry. And I came with hunger to come and receive. And that great veteran of the gospel of blessed memory, while he stood there, I was part of the crowd. For six hours, I stood with hunger.
listen to me ladies and gentlemen let me speak to you you can just help her you can if you can take her back to her seat and she does not disturb no problem just don't malhandle her just take her gradually these are just manifestations of the spirit now pay attention please listen listen i remember in that crusade it was on that crusade ground that was the first manifestation of the holy spirit that i saw he finished preaching just like this other people came for entertainment other people came to do man of god on the crusade ground i came with hunger because i was tired of that current level i had seen a dimension of the workings of the spirit in his life and i desired with all my heart and when he finished preaching he was going to take water so that he would minister the baptism of the holy ghost and something supernatural happened my eyes were open and i saw a bird without exaggeration that bird would be as big as this auditorium i just saw it moving i thought everyone was seeing it but i was the only one who was seeing hovering round i said what is this by the time i was done from that vision i had turned to back the stage i didn't even know when i had turned and the holy spirit took me to genesis chapter 1 verse 2 and the spirit hovered round the face of the waters and he told me the union between the spoken word and the movement of the spirit is what bends the miraculous i saw it by revelation Am I wasting your time tonight? We are going to pray. Perception. Right from that place I believed him. And gradually, gradually the Lord began to show mercy. And today all I can say is glory be to the name of the Lord. The doer of every good thing. The Lord sent me here to tell you, and it is true, that where you have encompassed this mountain, and this level long enough there are men of god here the lord has brought me here to push you stop giving excuses it's time to do ministry that brings glory to the name of the lord stop giving excuses for lack of miracles i'm not called into the miraculous it's a lie there's no such thing as that it's because you have not enlarged your heart to contact the genuine grace that provides it Oh, it's because I'm not domiciled. I'm not a resident of Adamawa State. That's why ministry is not growing. It's not true. It's not true. Heal all your excuses. And say, Lord, I'm tired of giving excuses. I open up my spirit. Why is my prayer life up today and down tomorrow? Why is my word life up today and down tomorrow? Why is there no influence multiplied in my life? Oh, Adamawa people are greedy. They will not give me money. It's not true. Another person will come into the city and they are following him with seeds. Kill every excuse. You see, when you take responsibility, God is ready to show you mercy. I knew that there had to be more to ministry. I made up my mind that I did not want to do ministry that was around jealousy and competition. Because that's what happens when you don't have results. When you don't have results, you don't have to be a bad person. You will continue to go through the cycle of jealousy, petty, gossip, and all of these things. That's always what happens when you don't have results. When you are poor and you see people blessed, you will insult them. When you fail and you see people succeed, you will find a way of saying that they cut corners. When God does not seem to bring that kind of honor that you deserve and you see people excelling. Let me tell you this. The cure for all of these things is to trust God to obtain grace. To expand. Joseph only forgave his brothers because he had become king. If they met him in the cave, he would not forgive them. There is some, do you know one of the reasons why many of us are still holding bitterness? It's because we don't yet have results. There is a way God will so lift you, it becomes unnecessary to discuss some things again. I believe that there are worship ministers in Adamawa State that must rise to become global voices. I believe that there are men and women of God here in this auditorium that must rise, not for self-glorification, but for the purpose of the lifting of the name of Jesus. I believe that there are businessmen here. A few of your businessmen and politicians have shown you the possibilities that happen when people can dare to believe themselves. Everybody has a destiny 
of increase and influence if you have not tapped into it you are shortchanging the potential of that which Christ has done in your life but the first price is perception there are some of you as a result of this conference you need to go back this night and carry the notebook where you and the Holy Ghost were writing many things years ago remember that old notebook go and take it back again and check what God wrote that you have stopped believing now you wrote in that notebook that there are people you will be sharing the stage with God revealed to you that a day will come you will be lifting people from wheelchairs but now when you started ministry and it looked hard you just shelved it away and said no I don't think that is possible I bring you a word of life there are many women today are called into the ministry of prophetic warfare and intercession right from the days of your youth you keep having visions and having prophetic insights you sleep you have dreams they come to pass exactly the way you saw what do you think was moving you there is a grace but you have refused to give it expression perception let me encourage the youth in this place and within this territory i love you with all my heart and let me tell you let nobody talk you down to make you believe that you cannot from this state bring up something that blesses the nations can i tell you this my life is proof that god can pick you from anywhere and exalt you and place you there and any spirit that has been lying to you that you cannot move past this level I curse that spirit from your life now enlarge your tent there is no enlargement except there is space one last scripture and we'll wrap up for today apologize for the time Second Kings chapter 6. You are my hiding place. Second Kings chapter. F uh, let's look at 4. We'll look at 6 tomorrow. Second Kings chapter 4. This was the story of the wife of the sons of the prophet. The first seven verses, please. Just take them gently if they can move to their seat. 2 Kings 4 verse 1. 2 Kings 4 verse 1. 2 Kings 4 verse 1. Now there cried, please look up. There cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha. Follow this carefully. It says, thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor... The creditor is come, sorry about that, I'll just quote it, that the creditor is come to take two of the sons as collateral. Listen carefully. Do you know while this woman was crying in her house, the oil to set her free was in that house. But the only problem with the oil that was that it was put in a small container. The problem was not the oil, the problem was the container carrying it every time the woman kept saying i don't have anything oh god bless me heaven was saying madam you have all it takes to pay your debt and live a comfortable life but she said where is it and based on her perception she saw a little cruise of oil and felt no this does not carry anything the bible says verse 2 please give us verse 2 let's hurry up verse 2 Elisha said unto her, What should I do to you? He says, Tell me, what do you have in Adamawa state? What do you have in Yola? Pastors, what do you have in your church? And here's what the woman said. And this is the response of many, many people. Thine handmaid had not anything save a pot of oil. And the prophet said, That's it. God will never leave you without a witness. The factor that leads to your lifting and your glory has always been there. But you have put it in a small capacity. Great oil but carried in a small mindset. So you cannot go past 
this limitation here was the advice of the of the prophet he said go and borrow the vessels you don't have to borrow oil but you need to borrow vessels of all thy neighbors even empty vessels borrow not a few for we are reading to verse 7 when thou art come in shut the door upon thee and thy sons and pour out into all the vessels and thou shalt set aside that which is food you know what he was telling her he said look man of god it is true that the visions you have seen they are great but those visions are being kept in a small perception they are kept in a small mindset your perception is small he's saying go and exchange it expand your capacity buy books buy the truth interact with minds that god has helped and shown mercy now watch what happened she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons and brought the vessels and she poured out verse 6 the miracle began to happen and it came to pass as she began to pour the oil into bigger vessels what happened the oil started increasing there is a relationship between space and increase space and increase if a woman wants her child to keep growing she has to bring him out of that space because that space is exhausted when he comes out of a bigger space what happens he begins to grow are we together now the bible says she said bring me yet a vessel and he said unto her there is not a vessel more and the oil respected the fact that her capacity had come to its limit if there was still greater vessels the oil will continue to flow again and the instruction came from verse 7 when you have now expanded your capacity it says go and sell the oil did you ever read in the gospel when jesus was talking about the parable of the ten virgins the ones whose oil finished he said go to them that sell these are the people that sell that's how they got the oil to sell are you seeing now the people who he recommended he said there are people who sell this oil for your lamp i tell you where they got the oil they got it as they were expanding their capacity they had more to pay their debt and they now had it to sell when you have the oil to sell the nations will come to you they will not come and meet nothing listen to me the nations will not come to you just because you are called of god the nations will come to you because you have enlarged spiritually can god put you in the middle of a stadium to minister to people and be sure that you will not be disappointed have you enlarged to that degree have you enlarged to carry grace to that degree? Can God keep you before kings today and be sure that you will be able to represent the purposes of the kingdom with accuracy and with intention? Ladies and gentlemen, God does not have a problem bringing enlargement, but there is a price. And the first price tonight is perception. Go back home and carry your Bible and begin to read about your future. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 It shall come to pass If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord To do and observe all that I command you this day It says that thou shalt be exalted above all the nations of the earth And this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you Right from that one room I believe I believe It shall come to pass That God will set you above nations and kingdoms I believe Many years ago when god called his servant the bishop during the days and the times of the patriarch now gone archbishop benson idahosa he believed we are gathered today in honor of a man who believed god can i tell you this the signs don't go before you these signs only follow them that believe <laughs> hear me hear me let me explain to you don't assume you understood what i said if what is following you is wrong don't drive what is following you drive what is attracting what is following you hear me these signs if failure and limitation and retrogression and shame 
and reproach is following you. They are not following you. They are following your perception. Those signs are coming in honor to and of your perception. You don't drive them by saying, go away, shame, go away. Uh -uh. You drive them by introducing light. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. Amplified says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. We are going to pray. It's time to still be in that one room. But let your mind dream with the Spirit of God and go to the nations. It's time to be in Adamawa State here and yet allow that prophetic ministry to rise beyond this city. It's time to allow yourself. Many of you here are brilliant people by any standard, but you have allowed status quo to keep you. I made up my mind that as far as loving Jesus, representing Him, and serving His purposes are concerned, I will continue to expand and enlarge until I sustain the capacity that will help the nation see Jesus. The global harvest is a mandate that we must not fail in. Discipling nations and helping them experience the love and the grace and the power of Jesus is a mandate that we must not fail. I vowed and I made a covenant with God as a man of God that I will never come into any city and any meeting and watch the sick go back sick, the oppressed go back oppressed. And all I do is waste people's time and talk to them. No, no, no. But making mere confessions like that and stopping at that will only end you in shame and reproach. There is a responsibility dimension to enlargement. Don't just say, God, enlarge me. He wants to. But are you willing to pay the price? The mother of James and John came and met Jesus and said, Can you grant that when you are done with Caesar and all these people, grant that my son sit at your left and your right? And here's what Jesus said. The space is available, but can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism? Apostle, I want the anointing like Reinhard Bonke and Benny Hill. That space is still vacant in the realm of the spirit. But can you pay the price to expand to that level? Apostle, I want to walk in the prophetic. I want to become a leading voice that serves the purposes of God within Yola and the Northeast and this country. Can I tell you the truth? It is true that there is an election of grace. But every one of us has an opportunity to rise to become the best and the greatest as God desires. The challenge is that many of us are not willing to pay the price. Someone by this teaching tonight, you need to get back to that price. If you, when others are sleeping, you carry your Bible, go to a bookstore. Minimize social media distractions. Go in there to sit down and waste time gisting and sit down. I'm on my way going somewhere. Listen to me, my dear people. Some of you need to sit down and get materials. All those three, four, five phones you have, you don't need them. Throw away all those things and have one or at least two is enough. Sit down. When other people are roaming around and loitering around as though they do not know where they are going, sit down and burn the candles. Don't pity yourself. You will pamper yourself to failure and mediocrity. There is nobody preparing for the Olympic who wants to prepare at the point of comfort. The Bible says that he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. Can I tell you this? Till today, you go back to my laptop, you go back to my phones, there are videos I'm watching, there are books I'm reading. Even though I came to this city, I came for a conference like this, and God has honored me to be the speaker as I return back now. Don't think I'm going to be sitting and crossing my leg and browsing. I also have spiritual projects that I'm on now. As far Because compared to where God is taking me, I'm just one step out of the cave. I've not started at all. Destroy arrival mentality. I've arrived based on what standard? Those you call men of God today in Bible days, they were ushers. Make up your mind until your presence can drive every devil out of Yola. 
without bragging and without boasting. Make up your mind as a man of God. That if you ever stand and pronounce to someone and say, God bless you. From, from your altar, the fire that emanates from it. When it rests upon that person, he must return with testimonies. Listen, nobody will clap for you twice for the same realm and the same level. If people clap for you once, that's okay for that realm. If you remain at that level, nobody will ever celebrate the investment of God's grace upon your life. God has called you to be a prophet. And it is true that you have the prophetic, but your capacity is small. Out of ten prophecies, only one is accurate. Discipline yourself and go back to the secret place. Don't move around, prophet anything. Please don't feel insulted. I didn't come to insult you. We are co-laborers, but I'm only challenging you. Some of you here are worship ministers. Don't go around celebrating mediocrity. Sit down and gauge yourself by a global reference. Thank God for the little invitations here, but Lord, let songs come from heaven. I obtain grace. Refuse to be a local champion. Refuse to compare yourself with people within your environment and say, at least I am better. No. You are not called to that life of competition. Your destiny is to the nations. Price number one as we pray. The price of perception. What is our prayer tonight? Lord, I'm tired. I don't know what has programmed a life of mediocrity in me. I don't know what has let me think that as a mother and as a woman I cannot be used by God. I do not know what has made me think that I will die without building my own house. There are many of us here, the only thing increasing in our life is our age. Nothing else is growing. Nothing else is increasing. The only thing growing in your life is your age. There's room for expansion. I was so honored when Bishop was graciously sharing with me earlier on about some projects that are ongoing. I was so touched and I said, can you imagine at this level there is still that grace. God has granted me by the privilege of his grace to interact and relate with the fathers of faith in this nation. And I say it with every sense of humility. There is none of them today as I speak that does not have a major destiny project ongoing. First in their lives and across the ministry. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know. There's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. Prayer point number one. Father, let fire come from heaven and plant a dissatisfaction. Let it burn away the arrival mentality at this level. In the name of Jesus, I obtain fire from heaven. Go ahead and pray, inside, outside. Fire from heaven. I refuse to be satisfied with this current level. Someone is praying. A man of God is praying. A businessman is praying. Shake a pakata baraka to sabranda gata belekata. Skada brata katele kaparus yata. Embrakata kaparaka to skada branda Are you praying? Lord, I can't remain at this level. Not at this level of signs and wonders. Not at this level of the apostolic and the prophetic. Not at this level of the miraculous. Not at this level of fasting and prayer. There has to be greater fire upon my prayer life. Enlarge me, O God. Yola, you pray. Hey, da pakata brante kaskata brakata la katabria. You're a man of God. Pray. Enta kata brante kada la kaparusha la katia. She brings the Kapeleka Taprakotosa la Katabriata, Ekrakatopa Katosha la Katabret de Gadevela de Bos, Ekrakatapa Katapata Katalekatepa, 
Rasta de Baraska de Bratzeke Paruska de Bratzeke de Balata. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. I will never be at this level. I never, I will never remain at this level. Politicians pray. Not at this level. Mama pray. Lord, you can take me to higher grounds, higher levels of fire, higher levels of grace, higher levels of power, higher levels of territory, land, space. There are churches, it's time to move out of that small place by the Spirit. Don't be tired, we are praying. Ali Paratos Kadabrenta Kaparushadia. A crackatabakatapa got to Prontos Koto Predicata. Salakatabrenta Katakatos Katabrenta Katabella Kataproskan. Embrekates Salakatabrenta Katabaria Kata. Hallelujah. 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 Listen to me. The next prayer point. You are going to pray that every negative thinking that came from my background or came from my past. Listen, when I talk about enlightenment and a superior orientation, I'm not talking about outsourcing a context that is out of scripture. There's m many things people call enlightenment that is, is, is just nonsense. Let this mind be in you. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus did not just excel just because he was the son of God. At age 12, when his colleagues were running up and down, he was in the temple. So when Satan came, he didn't say, I grew up knowing. He said, it is written. You can tell life situation, I grew up knowing. Or you can say, it is written. Are you ready to pray? Father, every mindset, just because you've held error for many years, does not mean that you are right. Listen, there are some of us, the reason why increases do not come, is because there are ideas and perceptions we have received and we have held on to and we have refused to let it go that keep us poor that keep us mediocre lift your voice and pray father in this conference i expand my mind i declare my disloyalty to any thinking and any pattern that is not consistent with the character of the christ someone is praying Someone is praying. Hela barata sada branda kete balaka tuja. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Last prayer point and we're done for tonight. Please listen to me. Please listen to me. You are going to pray. He says, satisfy me early with your mercy. There is the spirit of lateness in Africa. If a young boy of 22 or 24 builds a house, buys a car, trains his siblings, and finances the gospel, they will say he went to do blood money. But when you build a house at 50 or 60, they say, aha, it's normal. There is a spirit that fights speed in the lives of people that when it's time listen can i tell you this the unit of god does not rush people i know but there is speed in the kingdom the unit of destiny is time and dominion over time is real dominion 
There are many of us right now as it is. Almost nothing is moving in your life. Your family is still there. Out of a family of 15 people, only one person has been able to lift up his head a bit. No. You are going to pray. Lord, bring speed of enlargement to my destiny. Go ahead and pray. Speed. Speed of enlargement. For the sake of your kingdom, for the sake of your glory. Speed. Bring speed to my enlargement. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Many years ago, I was praying. And whilst I was praying, I was caught up in the realm of the Spirit. And I was taken to a place and I saw a giant door. It looked like an ancient door. And I stood in front of that door. And the door was made of many smaller doors. Many smaller doors made up the main door. And I noticed that those smaller doors were opening and closing. Opening and closing. And every time they opened light would just come from them. And I looked at the smaller doors and on every door there was a scripture that was written. And the Spirit of the Lord told me that these doors represent dimensions in the Spirit. And these dimensions are governed by a mystery written in those scriptures. Every time you catch the mystery, the light represents the grace dimension to defend that revelation. So every revelation that you actually catch in the Spirit, there is an engracing from God that empowers you to walk in the reality of it. Whatever you claim to teach and know without the grace to demonstrate its validity is not yet life to you. The Bible says they are life to those who find them. Not those who are aware that it is there. It is those who find them. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, it says, shine. Not because you are tired of sitting. No, you don't arise because of time. You arise because of light. It says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. It's always been around, but the day it comes to you. That is the day you arise. And it says, The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I always like to quote from Amplified. It says, Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. That the people that sat in darkness, they have seen a great light. John chapter 1 and verse 5 says, The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Listen, please listen to me. Um, co-laborers in the gospel, and then the body of Christ over this territory. In this kingdom we excel on the strength of superior spiritual knowledge, illumination that we have. Dominion is not an impartation. Dominion is the resultant effect of comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. Our ability to understand the ways of God. Just because eternal life or the faith life provides access to a life of victory and grace does not mean you will just walk in it arbitrarily. It takes knowledge. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Paul was lamenting while mentoring the church in Ephesus. And he says, having their understanding darkened. He says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Spiritual ignorance is able to make a man, though saved, not able to walk into the fullness of that which was purchased for in Christ. He says, an heir, as long as he is a child, that he differeth not from a slave, even though he be Lord of all. And so before I begin to speak to you, and I'm hoping that the Holy Spirit will use this introduction to plant in you a passion for superior spiritual knowledge. You do not have anything to say if you are not grounded and rooted in the Word. You see, the Word of God defines the boundary of God's commitment to the believer. God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provision that Scripture allows. So the more you are sound in doctrine, thoroughly furnished in the Word, you sustain the tools to produce victory. Hallelujah. 
and even signs and wonders like we'll be experiencing shortly tonight are at the instance of the word it does not just happen it is when you hear the word in Acts chapter 8 the Bible says from verse 5 please give it to us so that I tidy up this introduction and this recap Acts chapter 8 and verse 5 the Bible says Philip the evangelist that he went down to Samaria and the Bible says he preached Christ unto them so it started with a declaration preaching Christ he communicated the gospel like Bishop said so powerfully with power and with understanding the next verse it says verse 6 the people with one accord those who were about to receive these miracles the first thing they did was to pay attention to the preaching of the word you see the difference between a herbalist and the system of God is a herbalist does not necessarily need your attention and it does not necessarily need a relationship all he needs is just compliance to the rules but when you come to the Lord the first thing is that he beckons on you your attention because it is the hearing of faith that produces miracles are we together so the Bible says the people with one accord they gave heed to those things which Philip speak hearing and seeing listen a real ministry must bring people to a point where they both hear and see a ministry that hears alone is not an absolute it's not a correct template for ministry if it is the God of heaven you are representing people must both hear and see God does not only speak he does We, this is one of the reasons why we need impartation so that the things that people have been hearing they will now see when people hear and see they will be convicted is that true the things that our eyes have seen that our ears have heard that our hands have handled even of the word of life that that is the things that we teach so the bible says please keep that scripture there that he spoke about the things that hearing and seeing the miracles which he did what were the miracles the bible does not leave us in the dark for unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies that were lame were healed as a result there was great city great joy in the city of yola when there is a manifestation of the reality when Jesus Christ and the faith life does not just become theory, when the kingdom is made manifest in the midst of God's people, it brings joy. And in this kingdom, your strength comes from your joy. Hallelujah. He says, He that told you have asked for nothing. He says, Ask that you might receive to the end that your joy be full. All of the things that we are going to be celebrating tonight, the miracles, the signs and the wonders, are to the end that there be joy in our lives. When you buy a car, it's not about the metal you are moving. It is joy you are looking for. When God opens a door for you, it is joy. No wonder the Bible says that in His presence there is fullness. Harvest never comes until you are in the atmosphere of joy that he that sows in tears he will reap not with joy in joy in joy in joy if you want food you have to enter the kitchen so you are in the kitchen in joy it is a realm that you must enter to have a harvest if you are not in joy there is no possibility of a harvest are we learning number three the third price that you must pay if you want to experience increase and enlargement is the price of building your faith the third price that every believer must pay the laborious price of building your faith let's discuss the subject of faith for a few minutes faith the bible has a lot to say about faith four times in scripture the bible declares that the just shall live by faith that in this kingdom we live by faith are we together hebrews chapter 11 and verse 4 it is one of the most comprehensive uh, compendium of the faith work it discusses the subject of faith in detail and here's what apostle paul says about faith he says now faith is 
this is the first information he gives us about faith that faith is not worse faith will not will be that if it is faith it always is now faith is now faith is always alive is living he calls it the substance of things hoped for please look up and then he calls faith the evidence of the things you have not seen he says for by this spiritual substance that we have come to name faith he said all elders obtained a good report then verse 3 says it is through faith that we understand we were not there when it happened but through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of god so that the things that appear were children that came out of an unseen realm this is an information that we believe by faith are we together then as we read on he says time will fail me to talk of gideon and jephthah and barak men who through faith it says subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions women who received their dead back to life the character of faith what is faith faith let me give you my definition of faith faith is the name given i pray that you will understand this that faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction on who god is and the integrity of his word the name given to the action not the believing believing is not faith believing is part of the process that leads to faith faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction based on your conviction everywhere you see the bible mentioned faith in scripture is predicated upon your conviction persuasion something god has said that you believe and then the end of your believing is that you know the participatory condition that supports actualizing that promise you see the bible please let's discuss doctrine for a few minutes the bible basically contains three things number one the bible contains promises please write it down the bible essentially contains promises number one then the bible contains principles number two god's modus operandi his system of operation they are hidden in mysteries the principles of the kingdom and then number three the bible contains prophecies so every time you open your bible you are like a spiritual archaeologist exploring promises principles and prophecies promises represents the commitment of god to you principles represent the modus operandi of the kingdom the system by which we obtain results matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 jesus was teaching while he walked upon the earth and the bible says when he called his disciples privately explaining these parables to them he said because it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom everyone say mysteries the mysteries of the kingdom represent a body of truth that are hidden only to those who are in the kingdom a mystery is a hidden code of operation are we together the DSS or the military people they have hidden codes of operation they have words that they use you have to be in that fold to understand what they are saying they are called mysteries you can come to a house and a husband and a wife they have hidden codes of communication in that house if you are a visitor and you are not part of that family you may not understand in this kingdom we excel on the strength of the mysteries that we know so anyone who is not part of the fold may not understand why we do the things that we do for instance that to rise in this kingdom financially among the many other principles the bible says there is he that scattereth and yet increases. it is a mystery it does not make sense until you are in the kingdom why will you be in the kingdom and have challenges before you and then you begin to dance and sing praises no 
what you do physically is to call the police and get lawyers and begin to cry but in the kingdom you are dancing and celebrating because it is a mystery it says i will call upon the lord who is worthy of praise by this formula prayer and praise shall i be saved from my enemies so every time you are overwhelmed you introduce this mystery the mystery of prayer the mystery of praise that's what happened at midnight when paul and silas when they were overwhelmed it is a law not a psalm it was a spiritual law that was hidden in the psalm that every time you are in trouble and you are overwhelmed call upon the lord prayer and then praise the union of prayer and praise always produces deliverance are we together now just knowing this alone will grant you grace to continue to triumph over situations that would have kept you down when we say you are matured in this kingdom spiritual growth is not measured by longevity in church no ne not necessarily you can be there for a long time and yet not grow there are two biblical indices that are used to measure spiritual growth number one the degree to which the character of the christ is formed in you in experience that is the first biblical index that shows that you are growing he says my little children of whom i travail until christ be formed in you the formation of christ the character of christ and that the character of christ is formed through a process that we call transformation transformation the name given to the process that makes you become like christ in experience the second biblical index for measuring spiritual maturity is your depth of comprehension of the ways of god you are mature to the degree to which you are able to handle the word of life effectively like the sword like a veteran in the army able to use the sword all of these spiritual arsenals the shield of faith the sword of the spirit which is the word of god that with it you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil are we still together just a digression to put things in perspective so faith is based on two qualities of god please listen carefully let's go to scripture there are two qualities of god that bible faith is based on if it is bible faith two qualities of god the first quality is found in numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. there are two spiritual qualities of god that produce bible faith in the believer number one is called his integrity everyone please read what is projected numbers 23 and verse 19 let's read in concert one to read stop 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 this is a very important information god is not a man say it after me please god is not a man he became a man but he is not a man if you say god is a man he must worship who created him so god is not a man he only became a man so that he can save men but god is not a man and he tells you that all men have the tendency of two things number one lies that men lie they don't lie because they are bad they lie because they are men <laughs> now listen 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 god is not a man that he should lie this weakness is not found in him and then not the son of man that he should repent so he's giving you an assurance that the one you are dealing with does not have this limitation god is not a man he's called integrity integrity comes from the word integer sameness as within so without that god possesses that quality of dependability please write it down the first quality of god that the true bible faith is hinged on is his integrity integrity this is not something that is easily achievable in the world of men integrity is hard as any sincere person integrity is not hard because you are bad it's hard because there are many limitations many of them beyond your personal control 
speaking from a human standpoint are we together i can tell you come and collect 10 naira from me because someone was supposed to give me that 10 naira and the person does not give me with respect to what i said if i don't give you i don't have integrity it does not mean i am bad whatever is the reason why i could not give you so that do you know what this means before god ever speaks he checks whether he has the ability to defend that statement there is like a spiritual immigration system he put around himself if god says i will lift you he's saying believe it i have checked every factor that can stop your lifting and i found out i am above it to have spoken like that faith faith is based on the integrity of god the second factor we have to rush i wish that we had all the time would have done an extensive teaching on faith because many believers do not know what faith is now is the reason why few believers have consistent results the second quality of god upon which bible faith is based on is found in ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 please give it to us ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 his ability bible faith is based on God's integrity and God's ability. Please, Yola, help me repeat. God's integrity and God's ability. One more time. God's integrity and God's ability. Ephesians 3.20 Now unto him who is able. He tells you straight up that God is able. So do not doubt. There are many people who have integrity but they don't have ability. integrity is the sincerity and the willingness to make true your commitment but do you have the ability if i have money i will bless you but you do not have the ability god has both the heart and the wherewithal so you will see jesus walking the express image of god he will say i will be thou cleansed i have both the integrity and i have the ability it will be dangerous if the only thing god has is integrity we will still be in trouble because you will say many true things but they will not come to pass are we blessed ability now unto him who is the him god and the bible says he is able not just to say there are people who are able to say but they are not able to do god is able to do now it is the doing part that surprises me that he is able to do above all Look at the one you are dealing with here. Above all that we ask. I understand asking. But he now says above all that we think. Hold on. Do you know how powerful the mind is? Go and ask Nimrod Kush. Genesis 11. There was no Holy Spirit. There was no Satan. There was a healthy mind. And they built a city that took only God to stop. And God is saying. Now you have a mind empowered by the Holy Ghost. And God is saying, still dare me. I am still able. Listen. This is the reason why you can stand and look at an empty land and yet see a construction there. This is the reason why you can watch a sick body. They are telling you that this person is dying of HIV and cancer. And you can dare to say within it a moment, it is not your ability. You don't have that kind of power in yourself. The assignment of a true preacher is to bring situations face to face with this God and step back. That's your assignment. Master the art of bringing challenges face to face with God and step back. And you watch the wonder working power. This was the audacity that David had before Goliath. Goliath said, Am I a dog? Israel is this the best you can do. I know I will kill you, but respect me. I'm a veteran of war. And David said, you don't know me. You come to me with your bows. But I come with a covenant. I'm about to step back and leave you with that covenant. This is faith. You want to subdue kingdoms? It is not just by talking carelessly. Most believers keep saying, oh, I will get this. Uh -uh. Your confession is only profitable if the law is that it starts from your heart first before your mouth you have to settle this for with the heart 
man believes unto righteousness. I'm shaking away unbelief. Because some of you are here seated with all kinds of sicknesses. Some of you are here ministry is small and yet you see when God talks to you, he talks like he's talking to himself. You know that it is God speaking to you because you do not have the power to do what he's saying. The moment God talks to you and it is possible, it's not God you had. That's a demon talking to you. God talks to men like he's talking to himself because it is only his power that can make happen what he says. Listen up. It's just an exhortation so that we can minister. Faith, the integrity of God and his ability. Now listen, you have to be convinced. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, it gives us a law if we want to see a performance in our lives. And you must subscribe to this law. It says, for without faith, that means outside of a realm of faith, it is impossible to please him. Why? For everyone who comes to God, before you arrive there, convince yourself first that he exists. He is means he exists. And then number two, there is a name God is called that few people know. He's called a rewarder. A rewarder is not what he does, it's who he is. God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Are we blessed? Faith. Faith. Time will fail me to talk of all the patriarchs. When God called Abraham as a single man, He told him, carry your wife, go to a land that I will show you. And he began to move with a few people there, came out of all of the Chaldeans. By the end of the story, he is a father of nations. God spoke and he believed. Took him a long time to believe, but finally he did. And the Bible says it was credited unto him for righteousness. And Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 says, And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. But if said, if you are the children of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. That means you will not only claim Abraham's blessings, you will have Abraham's convictions. If you do not have Abraham's convictions, you will not get Abraham's blessings. Can I tell you this? There are many dimensions to faith. But one of the dimensions that must always be expressed in your life if you are you are a man of faith is land. There is a relationship between faith and land. Somewhere in the equation of your faith, you will always be given grace and authority for territory. Are we blessed? Hear me. Many of us are too scientific to be used by God. You calculate everything. How shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man, Mary said. How will one plus one become ten? Anything plus God in it is the answer he gives. Anything. One plus one is two, you are right. But one plus one plus God equals to the answer he chooses. Any answer, once you put God in an equation, the calculation changes completely. I'm saying this so that you can believe God. Listen. Faith is not just what saying. It's not saying what God has said alone. It is also doing what he has said. Bible faith always leaves you with a responsibility. A participatory responsibility. If you do not find your participatory responsibility. As far as actualizing any promise is concerned. It will never come to pass. There is always something to do. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 Write it for reference That it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord To do and observe all that I command you this day Then it says you will be exalted above all the nations of the earth And that these blessings will come upon you and overtake you There is always something to do Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 Moses had, I mean uh, God admonishing Moses now after Joshua after Moses died it says, this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate during day and night, that thou mayest observe to do, observe to do, observe to do, observe to do, all, not some, 
observe to do all that is written therein then and only then shalt thou make thy ways prosperous and that you will have good success hallelujah the classic character of faith is you see in the bible i don't know if i said this yesterday but every time god wants to preserve his mysteries he will enter a covenant with men that capture that dimension of that kingdom mystery and they will become his principal reference every time he wants you to walk in that dimension he will refer you to those people so when god wants you to understand faith and the blessing the personality that represents the subject of faith is abraham if god wants you to and to understand encounters with god how people are changed through encounters the personality that captures that mystery is jacob if god wants you to understand the prevailing power of prayer and its ability to shift systems and territories the personality that captures that dimension is elijah are we together now yes if god wants you to understand favor how the favor of god works the personality that he refers you to is esther if god wants you to understand deliverance how that he's able to deliver to the uttermost the nation of israel becomes the case study so when the bible lets us know about the subject of faith according to isaiah 51 from verse 1 and 2 it refers us to the patriarch abraham and sarah understood their lives to understand to find out the dynamics of faith it says isaiah chapter 51 can we have that goodness it says how good to me ye that follow after righteousness and seek the lord look out from the rock from whence you were hewn verse 2 it says look on to abraham your father understudy him and to sarah that body he says for i called him alone and blessed him and what increased him so you want enlargement to faith there is a patriarch the bible mandates that we follow them who through faith and patience have obtained can i tell you what is a dream for you now is someone's reality and the bible says follow them there is something don't follow anybody if you do not find faith in the equation of the achievement if you do not find faith if they did not have to believe god somewhere run away he says follow only those who you see their promise obtained through faith and patience are we learning something tonight you must believe in god blessed is she that believes the bible says for unto her there shall be a performance of those things spoken blessed is she that believes blessed is she that believes do you know the bible says when you read john chapter 20 the last verse i believe it says many other miracles jesus did in the presence of his disciples that were not recorded in this book it says but this was written that you might believe and that in believing you will find life eternal he wants us to believe listen to me this bible you see from genesis to revelation it's a manifesto of god's integrity he dares you he says look at it choose any verse and any scripture and see how faithful i have been so that you can believe me you are not the first to be in a situation down ask esther i can pick women from a village to the palace ask israel i can pick them from egypt you are not the first to desire lifting you are not the first to want to build a house you are not even the first to be caused at jabez and jabez was more honorable than his brethren he said the mother bought him in sorrow but jabez changed the narrative of his destiny he says oh that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my tent and that your hand will be upon me and god answered him you are not the first to be in a situation of life and death our nation and our territory is not the first to go through economic turmoil a time came when the whole earth was in trouble in genesis 42 and verse 1 and 2 even jacob the prophet was hungry and the bible says he called his sons he says why ye look at one another paraphrasing he said i have heard that there is corn when jacob saw that there was corn in egypt 
he gathered his sons he said i have heard that there is corn in egypt he says go and buy that we may eat and not leave it was hunger that took israel to egypt hunger always takes god's people to egypt there is only one reason why israel goes to egypt hunger beware of hunger that's why you must understand the blessing system of the kingdom because hunger can lead you from israel to egypt where you now become slaves every time satan wants you to come to egypt he does not have to say come he just programs an economic climate of hunger and when there is hunger even jacob the prophet goes to egypt are we learning something tonight faith i believe god and the bible says the righteousness that is of faith speaks on this wise so faith is not silent if it is true faith there is an equation it first starts with conviction not confession confession comes from the word homologio that means repeat as you have heard it is the confession without conviction is just a mock of oneself I will rise, I will rise, I will rise. Uh -uh. Your heart must be set on first. It is from the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. The mouth does not speak for the heart to know. No. Meditation is how the heart receives. When the heart now receives from the strength of meditation, the mouth will speak. Are we together? Listen to me. I want you to be careful what you hear. Because what you hear consistently becomes what you believe and what you believe and act upon is what becomes your reality understand this you must culture yourself from the negative news our world is full of all kinds of things you switch on the television and in one hour you are discouraged can i do ministry in yola ah. But I believe I believe Jesus I believe I believe in miracles I believe in Jesus I believe in signs and wonders I believe in increase I believe in multiplication I believe I believe that until my assignment is done no mortal man born of a woman can take my life no, 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 no. It's not a general thing. You do what you believe. This is my statement of faith. I believe that the favor of God can turn the tides over a man. I believe you can create your own spiritual climate like Goshen was in Egypt. That even though there be darkness, you can dwell in a realm of unapproachable light. This is what I believe. I have searched from scripture and I have found out that God can be trusted. He is not a man. Servants of the living God, let us get back to the authority of scripture. Don't just believe because a man you love said it. You must go to the word of God. The woman, the prostitute at the well, when she met Jesus Christ, after having a discussion with him and perceiving he was a prophet, she began to bring the issues of worship and when Jesus gave her a new orientation the Bible says she ran and called people come see a man that told me what I have done they did not come because they believed in Jesus they came because they were surprised at her transformation but when they came they met Jesus themselves and after that encounter here was their testimony we now believe not because you said it your testimony was only an usher that led us to now have an encounter for ourselves Believers, it is good to believe the God of your pastor. Only if he, he will eventually become your God. Because it is your God that will produce your miracle. Daniel 11 and verse 32. But the people that do know their God, not another man's God. Another man's God, you can tap through the covenant of covering and prophecy and submission. We are coming there. But principally, your results will be obtained in this kingdom listen very carefully your results will be obtained in this kingdom based on the revelation of the god you know i know whom i have believed i don't just believe him i know whom i have believed 
and I am persuaded, he says, that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. The Bible says, now there remaineth a rest for the people of God. He says that today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness. They could not enter the rest of God, even though they had the word like we did, but the word did not profit them, not mixed with faith in them that heard. What is the faith? The actions of obedience based on the truthfulness of what God said. The first miracle recorded according to the synoptic account of John was the wedding in Cana. And it was a demonstration of the might of God. He says, this beginning of miracles did Jesus. Are we together now? And the Bible says that he revealed his glory. The disciples now believed in him. What was the miracle? A feast was happening and the wine finished. When the wine finished, there was going to be an embarrassment on the couple. And then a few people found Jesus. And Mary said, whatsoever he says to do, do it. It may not make sense, but do it. And he said, fix, fill six vessels with water. Fetch that water and start moving to the ruler. You know in those days rulers were cruel people any embarrassment will cost you your life immediately there was no counseling there was no advice you would die immediately why would you fetch water and be on your way to go and give a ruler prove that you trust me that much that god is not a man prove that you believe me that much so god tells you it's time to have a church and with one thousand naira in your account you ask your friend and you foil his car and you say, let's drive down Adamawa. God spoke that it's time for us to establish that building. And while you are doing that, your senses is saying you must be crazy. And you say, no, 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 it's not my fault. I'm not the one who will fund it. I'm only a steward. The Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. My assignment is to use my obedience and bring that situation face to face with the God of the Bible. Listen, the exploits of faith in this kingdom is based on the simple obedience within a few minutes we are going to be celebrating the hand of god and the move of god and every one miracle every one sign and wonder restoration your requests that have been written here many of you will be surprised to see the way doors open it will be as though you were given a term in this conference you see just like that and then the glory goes to the lord because i'm telling you if you can believe god there is no limit to what he can do. If you believe him and walk in keeping with the conditions allocated for actualizing that miracle, being convinced and convicted will not bring the miracle. It will only start the process. You must walk in keeping with the conditions, the conditions, the conditions. Are we blessed? In one minute, I'd like you to lay hands on your head and say, Father, increase my faith. Go ahead and pray. Increase my faith. Faith can grow. Faith can grow. If your faith does not grow, your possibilities will not grow. If your faith does not grow, your results will not grow. If your faith does not grow, you cannot have enlargement. Capacity to believe God. Capacity to believe God. So then faith comes by hearing. The hearing that produces understanding and that by the word of God. Someone is praying. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. So price number one that you have to pay is the price of accurate perception. Your belief systems and your spiritual orientation must be consistent with the word of God. Price number two warfare there are powers that be that stop the advancement of god's people he was talking to the church in thessalonica i desire even i to come to you once and again but satan hindered us and so we pray and clear the spiritual highway number three is the price to build your faith bible faith always produces results and the fourth price that you must pray you must pay the fourth price, if you want enlargement, is called the price of prophetic alignment. Write it down. Someone's life is going to change now. The price 
of prophetic alignment. I'm praying for you that what I'm about to share, listen to me, if you catch this revelation, many of you will begin to run like Elijah, that within a space of your life will so change. Believe me. Please pray in the spirit in one minute if you can. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Hallelujah. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. Let me teach you something about the prophetic. God of vengeance has come my God of miracles has won my battles. I'm a winner man. A winner man. Yes, won all my battles for me. I'm a winner man. I'm a winner man. Yes, won my battles for me. The Bible says, Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. And by a prophet, the Lord, he was the one who brought them. But the technology and the dynamics is that by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel, where? Out of Egypt. He literally translocated them by the ministry of the prophetic. He says, and by a prophet was he, the Israel of God, preserved. Now, please look up. The prophetic ministry, I think, and it extends also to the apostolic, is one of the ministries that has been misunderstood more than any other ministry. Are we together now? On both sides of it, there has been all kinds of imbalances and error. So on one hand, we have all kinds of things that are not, they are not accurate as far as the administration of spiritual things is concerned. All in the name of the prophetic. And this came because of the way Africa, Africa comes largely from a heritage of idol worship and superstition. Are we together? So it is easy from that standpoint to be inclined to the prophetic. But you see, when you approach the prophetic without renewal and transformation, you will inevitably end up dabbling between witchcraft and spirituality. Even though you are sincere, it takes transformation to create coordinates of balance. Transformation through scripture. The absence of doctrine. Because the realm of the spirit is a vast realm, open to all. And the Holy Spirit is not the only usher that leads you there. Any spirit can usher you there. And the moment you access the realm of the spirit, whether demonically or spiritually, you already have an advantage over the natural man. Pay attention, please. We are discussing the prophetic. So the prophetic in Africa has been marred with a different shade of imbalances. Are we together now? And so many people, because of the way the prophetic has been, just feel that the only way to manage this is to avoid it completely. Because I'm not ready to dabble into anything that has to do with superstition or witchcraft and all of that. But there is a role that the prophetic plays in actualizing destinies. There is nobody, please listen to me, I'm sharing with you a deep mystery now. No matter how you are, listen to me. Even if you meet Jesus directly, he will still refer you to the system he has put for rising. You will always need men to change levels. No, no matter what your spiritual encounters are, you will still be referred back. Ask Saul when he met God and became Paul. You would think after an encounter with Jesus Christ, he should not need any man again. It was Jesus himself that referred him back to the structure in the body. Go to the house of Ananias. Stay there. There is a man I have ordained. Now watch this. Sit down. Sit, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. When Jesus came, the word of God, his heavens were closed for 30 years. Jesus, your Jesus, 
walk under a closed heaven for 30 years until he met a strange prophet called John. Your Jesus, as anointed as he is, the Holy Ghost did not come upon him and the Father never called him son until he met a man. Please listen. This is not idol worship. Forget about some of these things that go on wrong. I'm communicating doctrine. I'm showing you why many of you have remained at the same position. Because the grace sends to hold your hand. Not arrived. This is true. This is true. Listen, listen carefully. Pay attention. Jesus walked as though he was not the son of God. For 30 years. And then. I hope you know that John was not a Baptist. John was a prophet. Baptism was a strategy invented to help him identify the Christ. And then number two, to now help him introduce a sacrament of immersion and then to be resurrected into Christ. Are we together now? So every time when John was in the wilderness as a prophet, he was given a sign that every time he baptized, he will look up, he will say, go, you are not the one. He will baptize, he will look up, go, you are not the one. He will baptize, he will look up. Now watch this. Please sit down, sit down. I'm teaching you something about the prophetic. Now John came to a point where he saw a 30 year old Jewish young man. And he says, no. You are the ancient of days. You are only in a 30 year old body. He said, I am not, behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. Watch this. John said, I, I, you are God. I'm a prophet. I know what I'm seeing. I'm not worthy to open your heavens. Jesus made a statement that is a warning to everyone. He said, suffer it to be so. It's an ordinance. If I don't submit to that ordinance, my heavens will close. I am Jesus, but suffer it to be so. No matter how anointed you are, no man ordains himself. No man honors himself. You can respect yourself, but you cannot honor yourself. Honor has to be conferred by another. Please sit down. Sit down. Fire is burning in this place now. Pay attention, please. I'm about to introduce something that if you understand, for many of you, this is the answer to the age-long prayer. Lord, why is it that I cannot shift? There is a law you have been breaking sincerely so. Look up, please. The heaven you are going to, that you so look forward to, go and read how heaven was constructed. Heaven was constructed with the names of 12 apostles of the Lamb as the foundation. The Bible says this is how the church was built. Look at the architecture of the church. Paul was given the privilege of seeing the architecture of the church. Pay attention. He said in the building of the church, the first person you meet is Christ. He's called the chief cornerstone. The moment you meet Christ, there are two strange ministries you must meet to rise. The apostolic and the prophetic. He calls them the foundation. Listen carefully. I don't mean the apostolic and the prophetic by name. Jesus wanted to do ministry. The Father was watching. The Holy Ghost was in heaven wanting to come. But where is the man that must give authorization? Because you see, that was the one who the mandate and the grace was upon. And even God would respect it. Let me tell you this. It is not only God you need to rise. It is only God you need to worship and your allegiance should go to. But when it has to do with the dynamics of manifesting destiny, you need God and you need the man he is using. Look up please. When the oil finished in the parable, it says go to them that sell. Not everybody is looking for oil. There are those who have it already. And I showed you yesterday how they got it. Remember? All those who have oil to sell. You want to know how they got it? Go to Second Kings chapter 4. Once upon a time, their oil was in a small cruise. They didn't know what to do. It was the prophetic they encountered that multiplied their oil. That they now have enough to sell to others. Are we together? Thank you. 
So Jesus Okay help us with the sound Jesus comes to John And John says Jesus says suffer it to be so Watch this He dips John in water He brings John out And your Bible The one you have on your hand now Says and the heavens Over Jesus Did he leave the heavens open to do ministry Watch this When the heavens open Two things happen One The Bible says the Holy Ghost Descended in the similitude of a dove It came and rested on him And number two A voice Watch this Watch this A voice spoke and said This is my beloved son now Question Who was he before? God had to make that verdict Your obedience Has validated your sonship Your compliance to my ordinances has validated your sonship now watch this it says this is my beloved son please catch this revelation in whom i am well pleased and he mentioned three words that if not spoken upon you you can never expand hear ye he question who has spoken to the territory to hear you jesus did not just manifest he would have been surprised God himself made a declaration Hear ye him He went to the desert, a cloud came He went to the riverside, a cloud came He climbed a mountain, a cloud came Resources came from fish Came from air Because a command was given Hear ye him That means whatever it would take For his ministry to find visibility Let it come Listen to me I don't doubt your call but do you have the hear ye him? Is has that grace been placed on your life? There are many gifted people in this city, genuinely anointed on fire. But you organize a meeting, there is nobody to come and hear what God is saying, and you know that God is saying something to you. There is a hear ye him grace, but it comes by submission to God's protocol of operation. Not even Jesus missed that. Are we together now? Abraham was at a point in his life where it seemed like nothing would happen except prophecy. And he returned from war and he met a strange king of an ancient city called Salem, called Melchizedek. Watch this. Abraham honored him and here was what Melchizedek said. Blessed be Abraham, son of the Most High, I make you possessor of the heavens and the earth. Watch this. Do you know, brothers and sisters, we're about to pray. Do you know that prophet Samuel was a man? Is that true? When God rejected Saul as king, David was already having visions as the next king. God was ready but the prophet you will use was still negotiating for Samuel and a man's destiny was suffering because the prophet that will announce him was not cooperating with God can you imagine that God is ready to lift you but the prophet you will use was still negotiating and you think God will say no 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 I have options look at how God had to come himself to negotiate with Samuel he says Samuel um, why do you continue to weep seeing that I have rejected Saul as king? Take your horn and go to the house of Jesse. You are, you are delaying someone who is ready because you are the prophet who should ordain him. See, hold on. Do you know what made Saul to lose his throne? He was not knowing the rankings in the spirit of men. He thought that because you are a king it also means that you are a priest and a prophet. And so they kept putting pressure on him. Offered the sacrifices. Samuel is wasting our time. And out of pressure, he offered the sacrifices. Samuel came and said, you have done foolishly. You would have allowed me to come. This is an office. He said, oh, God would have established your throne forever. But now that you have done this, the kingdom is taken away from you. You would have been, thou son of Saul, have mercy on me. But now he lost it. Can I tell you this? This is not human worship. 
But please hear me, Yola. All men are not equal. We are equal in Christ. The same Lord is rich unto all. Are we together? But in terms of our personal sacrifices, alongside the election of grace, it has separated us into spiritual cadres. This should not bring pride. But let me tell you this. You can remain for a long time and God will be watching you as merciful as he is until the day you find the grace sent to lift you. Not the grace available. There were many widows in Zarephath, but to none was Elijah sent. Elijah passed other widows and greeted them. But the day he went to the one he was sent to, that was the end of our situation. Are you learning something here? When it was time for the nation of Israel in Exodus chapter 14, we don't have the time. These guys continue to cry before God. How many of you know that according to the prophecy that was given to Abraham, they would spend 400 years? Question, who added the 30 extra years? One man, Moses. The slow pace of his training added the captivity of the people he was to deliver. Because until he was ready, he now went to Ramesses, his half-brother, who had now become the pharaoh of Egypt. Thus saith the God of the Hebrews, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, what nonsense are you speaking about? After ten plagues, he allowed them to go by a prophet. When he brought them out, watch this. They got to a point where they were standing before the Red Sea. And the Egyptians were running after them. They were angry and they said, Moses, we told you. We would have just remained slaves. But Moses said, no. Exodus 14, verse 13. Please give it to us. We are reading from 13 to 15. That's what is happening to someone this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Exodus 14, from verse 13. Exodus 14 from verse 13. 14. 14. Media. Exodus 14 from verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Yola, fear ye not. He says, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he shall show you when. Talk to me. When? Not tomorrow. Today. Today. It was a prophet who was speaking what God was about to do. And he said for the Egyptians, for the cancer, for the situations that you see today, that you will see them no more forever. Next verse. Next verse. He says the Lord will fight for you. So when a prophet is coming, it is the Lord fighting for you. Moses was there with them and he was saying the Lord was fighting for them. How did the Lord fight for them? By giving them the advantage of the prophetic. Are we learning something? Next verse. 15. Moses. The Lord now said to Moses, I have promised them that I will fight for them. But if we keep quiet, nothing will happen to them. Why criest thou unto me? You are a prophet. I have spoken. Echo what I have said. Speak unto the children of Yola. And tell them that they go. Speak unto them. That they go. Last scripture. Acts. I mean 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 1. Second Kings chapter 1. Please give it to us very quickly. We're about to pray. I hope the Lord is working your faith and building capacity to know that something is coming on you. One of these, these women, three that are sitting, as I just saw fire coming on one of you. Right now I stretch my hands, these two. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm seeing fire come on you. And the Lord is saying, in this season, I'm about to announce you. Take that grace. I come as one sent. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. I want you to pay attention to what the Lord is going to be doing in your life. 
one thing I know for sure is that you will never be the same. Yeah. Hallelujah. Two, three people will start running out by the anointing. Just hold them and bring them out. Hold them. The power of God is coming on them. They will start running physically. Is it? I'm not saying start running by your. It's the power of God that will bring you. Just hold them, whether you are an usher or not, whether they are inside or outside. Bring them, please. Please bring them. Second Kings chapter six. My God, fire is about to burn in this place. No, don't bring them out. Not this ones. Not this one. The instructions is those running by the Spirit. Just bring them out. The era of delay is coming to an end. Please help them. Just hold them. I want to speak to them. Then they can go back. Now look up please everyone. And the sons of the prophet this was an issue of space. They were tired of limitation. And they said, Behold now, the place where we dwell with you is too small. Now, ministries, businesses, the space. Verse 5. But as one 
was felling a beam the axe head fell into water and he said alas master it was a sincere journey for expansion i didn't intend to be in this trouble the trouble i have with the bank today was simply because i intended to enlarge the challenges i'm having today is because i intended to enlarge but thank god for the prophetic he carried the prophetic along to his place of breakthrough and then verse 6 alas master it was borrowed and the man of god said have no fear while you were on your journey you carried the prophetic along now that you are in trouble do not fear the prophetic is a bailout system to bring you out of that tragedy and the prophet said where fell it and he showed him the place where is the place where you are sick show the prophet the place where is the business ailing you he said right here where is the area of concern the prophetic is asking you by the spirit tonight where is the area that doors have not been opened he pointed the place is my finances that's why i asked you to put your prayer request together where fell it please help that lady just so that you don't the prophetic said where fell it tonight god is asking you again through the prophetic man of god where fell that battle axe the axe that you were supposed to use for the next level where fell it and he said right here and he took a stick an insignificant formula and threw it there and the axe head began to float and he said pick it up tonight please hear me this will be our final encounter together the lord has brought the city together many of you from region to region state to state please i like for your heart to be open in this place right now the lord is going to be healing the sick in this place the lord is going to be delivering people there are destinies that have been held under captivity for a long time it's time to be released and hear me there are graces there are mantles there are unctions that have been searching for some of you for many years god has sent me tonight by his spirit some of you have tasted of the power and the grace of god in a measure it's time to rise higher he have encompassed this mountain long enough it's time to move higher are you ready to pray fire from heaven fall upon my destiny let things begin to change and shift in my life go ahead and pray stand if you can please pay attention I want you to listen to me listen to me this man standing before you what you see and hear tonight is the privilege of an election of grace please no distraction listen hear me one day i became tired of religion i became tired of church i became tired of seeing the sick go back sick the oppressed go back oppressed when that happened 
I began to seek the Lord in prayer, loving Him and saying, Lord, if you desire to use me as a man of God, do not send me with only a sermon. Send me with a grace and send me with an anointing that can bring the nations salvation, hope and healing and deliverance. Listen, my hunger, I was not looking for ministry. When I started my journey with God, I was not looking for fame, not ministry, not even anointing. I wanted Him. That was all I wanted. If you must find true power in this kingdom, the formula must be restored. In the beginning, God. Not in the beginning, ministry. Not in the beginning, signs and wonders. He must become the object of your pursuit. And one night, the Lord Jesus Christ came into my room. Pay attention. And when he came to my room, I was standing there before his majesty. I have seen him. I don't just believe him. I know that he's alive. Hear me? When Jesus stood before me, majestic in beauty and splendor, I was like a piece of rag on the ground. I know what Isaiah said when he said, Woe, I am undone, a man of unclean lips. When I saw Jesus, I knew that many preachers did not know him. It took me more than one year to recover from that encounter. Now listen please. Right from that place, he stretched his right hand towards me. And light at his brilliance came and entered me. And when that light entered me, in another encounter, the Lord told me, he said, son, from today I give you my presence as a gift. And then I see this angel standing before me and he said, this will work with you. I said, what is his name? He said, he's called the angel of the Lord's presence. This is why you see some of these manifestations that you see. And hear me. The Lord gave me several mandates that I've been ob obedient to. But one of them that must happen tonight, listen carefully. He said, every city and every nation that I send you to, there must be someone in that place that the light that came from me to you, that same light must be transferred to them. Listen to me. This does not happen to everyone. But I can tell you, I have been obedient to this call. From nation to nation, city to city, I know there has to be someone in this place, this night, who has hungered and said, Lord, I know you are calling me for such a time as this. I'm tired of just having sermons. There has to be a grace. The global harvest is a reality. But it cannot happen just with cheap talk. Our possibilities are defined by the kind and the level of grace that is upon us. Hear me, Yola. You are immersed in such a dense atmosphere of His presence and His power. And anything that does not name the name of Christ is about to leave. Yeah. Hallelujah. Help that man. About to leave. You will never, never, never be the same. Please listen to me. I bring you a superior dimension. I bring you a wine that was brewed by the Spirit Himself. This is not a preacher coming to preach. No. You think like that, you will not receive anything. It's an election of grace. There is a throne that backs the things that you see. So very quickly, we are going to begin to pray. Please just help those under the anointing, whether you are an usher or not. Now is the time when you will be your brother's keeper. I want to pray.
what will happen to you tonight. This man, that man lifting his hands. Sir, shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands towards you. That name you have called, I'm seeing fire just come on you. And the Lord is saying he's shifting you to a new season. In the name of Jesus Christ, may that fire shift you to a new season. You will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yola, are you ready tonight? Lift your voice in one minute. Everything you desire to happen in your life, begin to speak it. Declare. Let's have all the prayer requests. so that there's no commotion and all of you who are by the edge up here please be careful I want to pray for you that everything that does not name the name of Christ in the name of Jesus it's time for it to go at the count of three I want you to shout the name Jesus that is the name that has been lifted above every other name hear me Yola at the shout of that name if God be God Everything sitting on anyone's destiny that is not of the Christ, it must give way right now. Are you ready? One, two, three, shout Jesus! Every altar, the Bible declares blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us 
that he nailed it to his cross. I decree and declare every planting that is not of God, we uproot it now. We uproot it now. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. My goodness, our time. Who is Godia? Godia, I'm hearing a name, Godia. Who is that? I'm hearing a name, Godia. Please, we do not have all the time. If you are here and the Lord mentions your case or your name, please, very quickly, let me just know. Turning your life around. Help that woman. Power of God is coming on you. You will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. My dear, look at me. I stretch my hands. The power of God is coming upon you. And I decree and declare shame and reproach. Let it leave your life right now. In the name of Jesus, over, forever, help her. In Jesus' name I pray. Um, who is Paul? Paul. Paul, who is that? Paul, you are wearing like a milk kaftan. Paul, is that someone like that? Who is that? What is your name? Where's the mic? Huh? My name is Paul. From where? I Come. Paul, God is about to change your life, my friend. What do you do? I try so many businesses. Huh? Okay, I want to pray for you. The Bible says, even the lawful captive shall be delivered. I will pray for you. There is a grace for entrepreneurship on you. And it may not look like it now, but the Lord is turning you. He will transform you in a very remarkable way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please bring for me. There is a gentleman, not a lady, a gentleman. He will shout loud under the anointing to the hearing of everyone. Please bring him for me very quickly. I need to pray for him before we pray for the sick. My friend, look at me. In the name of Jesus, I bring you life. And I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, let seasons change over your life. Receive that grace right now. In the name of Jesus, a change of season. You will never be the same. Never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help me please. There is a gentleman. The power of God is coming on. Ah. Please bring him. Your name is Paul too. 
What's your name? Danjuma. I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm about to pray for the sick now. Let there be a miracle for you. Supernatural miracle. In the name of Jesus. I am the Lord is showing me a woman. All the ladies in that family. This is what I'm saying in my vision. None of them have been able to have a child. Who is that? I want to pray for you. Please don't just come out at random. This is a vision God is showing me. Please who is that person? I want to pray for you now. It's time for God to turn your morning into dancing. What do you do? Huh? You are a pastor where? Huh? He didn't think. I want to pray for you. You, you. Look at me. Look at me. Your life will never be the same. You will begin to walk strongly in the healing anointing. Amen. Take that grace now. I stretch my hands. May that grace come upon you. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for this gentleman by the power of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord himself show you mercy and lift you. Even to higher grounds. By the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the family, if you are not here, no problem. We just, I want to pray for the sick. All, I'm seeing the ladies, no fruitfulness at all. Is, that, is there someone like that? Don't tell lies. Come. Where are you from? Where is she? Who knows? Huh? Huh? Madam, is there somewhere like that? Okay. How many are you? How many are you? Your family. Are you married? No children. Look at me. You're going to have a baby boy. The prophetic does not only reveal, it creates. It makes what has no business happening to happen by the authority of Jesus. I want to pray for you and your sisters. Huh? Maimuna. Maimuna. I don't know why I'm getting this name, Maimuna. We have to redeem the time and pray for the sick. Maimuna. I'm hearing a name, Maimuna. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have shown me concerning this lady. I prophesy upon you and I prophesy, Memuna. You are wearing maroon. You are coming from outside. Outside. This Memuna is not in the auditorium. Outside. This side, in fact. Outside. There. Who is that? Where are you coming from? Uh, uh, uh. Where in? Are you? Yes. Is she, is she coming from? The person I saw was coming from outside. Yes. Where, where were you? Yes. Outside. Yes. My dear, what do you do? What do you do? I'm a politician. Do you know why I called you? Because it may look like what you are doing is not making sense. But the way God is going to lift you, it will surprise many people. I'm not a politician, no. I'm a man of God. But you see, there is a kingmaker anointing. Kingmakers don't become kings themselves, but they can enthrone and remove kings. Politicians do politics with integrity. Do politics. If you're a politician here, I beckon on you by the mercies of God. The era of just siphoning resources, let's stop this thing and serve God's people with sincerity. It doesn't matter what political position. No matter how much you steal, is this same stomach, this is the limit of what you can take. We must restore integrity in governance. Hallelujah. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, may the God of heaven show you mercy. I place grace upon your life. And I provoke the mean kaparus Receive the grace. Now I set you on fire. Let doors be open for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please listen. I want to pray for the sick now. Our time is gone. My dear, okay, I call her out. In Jesus' name. Just place your hand on your stomach. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be a miracle. Ah. 
now. Let it be over by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, every devil gives way now. Hmm. The authority that is in the name of Jesus, the key of David that can open a door that no man shuts and can shut a door. This lady, I'm seeing the grace that was on Esther on you. You, this lady, come. You, this one with. Come out. Where are you coming from? Huh? I want to pray for you. Listen, God will put you in palaces and before kings. It will surprise you what God will do. I'm saying it in the open. There is a grace that enthroned. Have you not been seeing it in your dreams? You saw it in your dreams. You were even telling somebody. Who were you telling? Your husband. Come. Don't be embarrassed, eh? Yes. The wonder working power of Jesus. What do you do, sir? You are a pastor. I want to pray for you. The grace that was on Esther is on your wife. God will grant her access to systems and structures. I stretch my hands and in the name of Jesus Christ, drink of that wine. In the name of Jesus, I set you on fire. May that grace begin to speak. That anointing is coming on you now. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for you, may God help you in ministry, my friend. The Lord is showing you mercy. Look at me. God is sending financial helpers. Sending financial helpers. It will be like a dream. God will just turn everything around for you. In Jesus' name. Can I pray for the sick now? Now, please listen. Please listen to the instruction inside and outside. I'm about to pray for the sick now. We will let the devil know once again that Jesus is still Lord over your life. Hallelujah. Many of you already, please, these ones, if they are alright, they can clear the way so that some of us... Now, when I pray for the sick, we are going to do this very quickly. We are out of time. As soon as I pray and rebuke that devil, the power of God is going to come upon you. There will be miracles here. Please let me have maybe one or two of the pastors and the aisle because we are going to call a few people who... We are going to call a few people who have been healed. We will just take a few testimonies. After that, I will pray on this. And then we'll do the impartation. Please be patient tonight. And let the Lord visit this city. Hallelujah. Now lay your hands. Where you are trusting God for a miracle. Everyone. Inside and outside. And you who is following from your home. Or from whatever nation of the earth. I'd like you to lay your hands where you are trusting God. For a miracle. Jesus. Something special. pray for you now. Take your eyes away, whether you're on a wheelchair, whether you're on crutches, whether you're on a stretcher, whether you have a medical report that is a death sentence, I'm about to pray. Just look on to Jesus right now. And I want you to agree with me as I pray. Are you ready? In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Shout a louder Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady is going to shout loud to the hearing of everyone under the anointing. The moment that happens, the healing power of Jesus will begin to move. Now, in the name of Jesus, I command every devil of infirmity, leave right now. Every devil of infirmity, inside and outside, I come by the apostolic and the prophetic, and in the name that is above all names, Every devil of infirmity leaves now. In the name 
of Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray for everyone who is sick. Be healed now. Amen. My God, mighty miracles are happening. Be healed now. Amen. Everyone on a wheelchair, everyone using crutches, lift it up and begin to walk now. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Every blind eye, partial blindness, total blindness, be opened now. Every deaf ear be opened now. I'm seeing someone with the issue of blood whether it's your circle or not you have the issue of blood with severe pain and pray right now go and check yourself the power of God is touching you right now there's someone with severe pain around the limbs in the name of Jesus Christ the power of God is touching you right now every growth long around the breast area fibroids every devil I declare that it leaves you right now there's someone with a severe case of migraine very severe case of migraine be healed right now in the name of Jesus your left eye does not see well but after this prayer I want you to check it right now Sugar diabetes is being healed now. The Lord is healing. I'm seeing hepatitis B. Be healed now in the name of Jesus Christ. High blood pressure be healed now. Pile, pile. The Lord is healing pile. In fact, for one of you, it's a severe case of pile. Be healed now. There's someone you have, I don't know if it's a boil or a growth around your armpit here. After the prayer, I want you to check it right now. You will not find it again. Hotness, severe heat around the body. In the name of Jesus, be healed right now. Now, for someone, it started like it was malaria. But till now, you feel severe pains around your joints. Whether you are sick or not, the power of God is touching you right now. Amen. Amen. There's someone here with HIV. You had a dream and you saw like a dog pursuing you. And it's like it beat you and you woke up and started having symptoms of HIV. I curse that devil of HIV right now. Amen. Every trace of cancer here, be healed right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Marvelous miracles are happening here. Someone you could not shift your neck. Right now I would like you to check it. The power of God has touched you. You will find out that there is no pain. In fact, I am seeing someone outside. I don't know what happened to your sense of smell. You couldn't, I don't know if you lost it or whatever it is that happened. But right now the power of God is touching you. And you will find out that your sense of smell is restored. In the name of Jesus Christ. You had an accident. I don't know if it was a fracture or something around your left limb. The power of God is touching you right now. Amen. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm seeing someone is like you've had Qatar, but it does not seem to go. This has lasted for a long time and it remains like that. You can't even inhale properly. Most times when you sleep, you are breathing through your mouth. Right now the power of God is touching you. Now hear me. Whether I mention your case or not. In the name of Jesus Christ who is the son of the living God. Some of you already right from yesterday the Lord had healed you. Some of you who came under the anointing here. Right now be healed in Jesus name. There, there is an elderly woman here. You have a problem breathing. You are unable to breathe properly. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke asthma. Amen.
someone the kind of pain you feel when you have weak love you are ex you've been experiencing that pain around your fingers but right now as i pray for you the power of god is touching you now hear me inside outside all of the overflows outside right to the gate and beyond and then those following online i seal your miracle right now i'm about to give you an opportunity to check yourself and we are going to celebrate miracles here Amen. now only those who have Amen. been healed by the power of god please check them the power of god has touched you i want you to check yourself do what you couldn't do some of you whilst you were under the anointing as you came up everything there's been healing inside or outside i want you to run there'll be a pastor here or here to just have them file up and then we'll take a few testimonies very quickly before the prayer session and then the impartation check yourself right now are you celebrating miracles people are coming my god check yourself check yourself check yourself check yourself, check yourself. do what you couldn't do before people are coming and about are you celebrating miracles those coming from outside please allow them confirm them and then we'll take a few testimonies some of you may need to go out and use the restroom some of you are outside do what you couldn't do before lord you reign and you rule over all all to you we ascribe all the praise lord you reign and you rule take a few testimonies listen as many just check yourself and keep coming but let's take a few that we have here who is, who is helping who is maybe we may need a mic this is the one he couldn't put in this in the gap for last over three years ago and now he can check your what's your name help him please hold on victor help them please get another mic get another mic for us get another mic look at this look at this come are you seeing this This is how long has this been? Almost one month. Almost. One month. You see it eating up and it has refused to heal. My brother, look at me. You believe in the anointing? Yes. You believe in miracles. In the name of Jesus, I bring you life now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Be healed. Let that wound dry up right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. Who is the next? You don't have to from where you are can just testify before we bring them out. My friend, your your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands. Let's take them one by one so that here is not rowdy. Last year, January. Last year, January. I will leave him, leave him. Hold on, leave hold on, him. hold on. Hold leave on. him, leave him. What's wrong? Stroke. Stroke. He could not walk. Yes. Walk. Come. Go. Come. Go. 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 Come. Gradually, gradually. Don't force him. In the name of Jesus, look at this. Could he do this before? Who came with him? Nobody knows. Guys, why? Could he do this before? My God, come on, come on, Yola. Look at this. For three years, my friend, look at me. In the name of Jesus Christ, look at me. I cursed that devil. Now, go! Now! In the name of Jesus. Now, this is what is happening. Look at his hand. Look at this. Look at this. Lift your hand. Lift your hand. Every devil, I cost you. Lift your legs. Go ahead. Gradually. 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 Gradually.
perfect you in Jesus' name. Please let's not be rowdy. Let's not be rowdy. God bless you. Take it easy. Please coordinate them. Don't just bring them out. We'll do it this way. We'll just alternate. Maybe once or two. Who brought these guys out? Why are they here? Very quickly help us please. Praise hold on, hold on. Yes. Praise please hold on, hold on. Let's be orderly. I've been having this pain Can you help us with the mic? What's your my, name? My praise. Praise. praise them and yes. Them. What happened? I've been having this severe pain for years. It comes and goes. Hey. Many times I've been How long? for almost seven years. Almost seven years. Yes. If I go and scan, they will say, just go and drink more water. I'm tired of scanning. Even last two weeks, I went to hospital. Uh, right now, what happened to you? Check yourself. Check. Press it. Any pain. Any pain. Ah. Is this how you celebrate miracles in your life? My dear, look at me. In the name of Jesus. Once I pray for you, you can go back to your seat. Look at me, my dear. I'm here to pray for you. I stretch my hands. That pain never returns again. I cast out now. In the name of Jesus. Never returns again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. Okay, I pray for you already. Grace for you. Young man, look at me. God is going to use you. Huh? Stand up. I decree and declare, may the help of God come upon you and through you to your family. I release that grace upon you right now. Take that anointing. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will never be the same. Yes, please. I can breathe for two years, but now I can breathe. You Some... couldn't breathe for two years? Yes, sir. Breathe in and out. Jesus! <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Pile. Pile. So how long? For more than 20 years, sir. More than 20 years. Yes, sir. I know I cannot sit. I cannot stand up for 6 years. And right now. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Can it be louder than this? I don't know who it is or give us. Hold on, please. Yes, please. Go ahead. My name is Medal I've been having problems with my legs. I with your legs? This one, yes. What couldn't you do? I couldn't even raise it. You couldn't raise it? Yes. For more than how many years? 15 years. Jump. Jump. Do what you couldn't do. Take it easy. Go ahead. Oh, you couldn't raise it. Hold on. Where were you standing? You, you could not even step. Okay, walk now. Any pain? Any pain? Lift it now. Any pain? Any pain? Any pain? In the name of Jesus Christ, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, it never returns to you again. In Jesus' name I pray. That grace is on you. Bring it to perfection. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. My name is Desmond, sir. My God, are you seeing the miracles happening here? Since 2018, sir, I've been having chest pain and waist pain after having a dream that I'm fighting with a demon and after waking up I found reality right is walking over my back and right now what happened right now I'm feeling nothing bend down up. check yourself any pain any pain what's your name come on give Jesus praise a miracle for destiny look at me in the name of Jesus perfection for you it never returns by the power of the Holy Spirit now I bring you life and I bring you healing in Jesus name yes please who's the next person Hold on, please. Hold on. Don't worry. We'll see. We'll have to redeem the time. Yes, please. My name is Atelier Peter. Can you be loud? My name Anyone is, on behind my, the mic? My name yes. is Atelier Peter. Okay. I've been having this pain in my joint for, for more than six months now. More than six months. Yes. Check yourself now. Check yourself. Any pain? Completely gone. In the name of Jesus, it never returns. By the power of the Holy Ghost, never returns. Sir, let me hear this woman, please. Okay. When you said a woman with difficulty, an elderly woman with difficulty in breathing, yes, I quickly answered, and from there, 
before I cannot even trade from here to where you are. You couldn't trade from there to this place. Yes, but, and right now. Yes, but, but now I came in myself. You came in yourself. Hold on, she's trying to say something. I have been on oxygen for a very long time. You have been on oxygen? Yes. Hold on. Huh? You are a doctor. You know her. Oh, you are a doctor. Come, 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 come. My goodness. You are a doctor. Oh my God, look at this. Doctor, she's been on oxygen truly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She has been in and out, in and out of hospital several years. Madam, breathe in and out. Let the devil see you do this. Any pain. Any pain. Any pain. Any pain. I stretch my hands. Perfection to you right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. You all celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Let's see if we can take a few more. Go ahead. Next, please, very quickly. Very quickly. My name is Mary. I'm the one having issues with sinos. I couldn't pass it anything. To you. you couldn't pass it anything? Yes. For how long? Since I was born. Since you were born? Yes, I couldn't pass it. I couldn't pass it anything. Is any of your family member here? No. I now you can it. smell something. Yes. What I did you smell? I that perfume. Your I perfume? Yes. And I can try to be. Hold on. I, I wish they can be a bit loud so that we we'll take. Um, I know there are many miracles. We may not be able to take everything. We might just choose maybe three or four more so that we can head quickly for the next. Okay, you couldn't smell anything. Yes, and when you mention hepatitis B, I'm having issue with it. Last two years, I tested it. You so, tested. Yes. Don't worry. Now you can smell. Hold on. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare this sense of smell. What is happening to Mama? I'm seeing her walk. She couldn't walk. Oh, severe headache. Okay. Huh? She's suffering from stroke. She's suffering from stroke. Mama. Okay, look at me, my dear. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! Out of my hand. Never returns again. In the name of Jesus. Yes, please. Ah! My name, my name is Dora. Yes, name is Dora. Before we end this service, we must do a one minute praise. So you gentlemen, get ready. One minute. Hold on, hold on, not now. When we are done, we pray on this. After the impartation, one minute, we must let the devil know that joy has returned in this environment. Yes, please, very quickly. Praise the Lord. My name is Dora Alba. I suffered from migraine since I was in primary school. Oh so it God. came, started. Let her go now. <laughs> Out! Now! In the name of Jesus Christ, never return to you again. Yes, please. I'm Damaris Okoje. Yes, ma'am. I have stroke and diabetes, hypertension, and then lumbar problem. For God's sake, you, you see how demonic and evil and wicked Satan can be? Stroke, diabetes, hypertension. Hypertension. And then lumbar problem. And then lumbar problem. What happened to you tonight? The headache that I was feeling, it is every time, but now. Mama, look at me. Look at me. Lift your legs. Yeah. Go ahead. Just lift your legs. Take it easy. Symptoms of stroke. Look at me. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord perfect what he started right now. Yeah. I stretch my hands and I bring you life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mama, look at me. Hold on. Lift this hand and put it down. Bring it down. Lift it. Bring it down. Lift it. Bring it down, lift it. Bring it down, lift it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that this that the Lord has begun, let Him perfect it right now. Headache, stroke, and what? What other? What did she mention again? 
diabetes and lumbar problem and hypertension. Die. In the name of Jesus, be healed right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, next person, very quickly. Um, we may just have two or three and then we're done, please. We'll, I'll, all the rest, I'll pray for you. What will happen is that you can, you can come and share maybe on a Sunday service. You can register your testimonies and you can still share them. Even though I know that there may be people coming from all over the body of Christ, but you can also take these testimonies to your various assemblies. Yes, please. My name is Bobby Simon. I came with a lump in my armpit, but now it's gone. You came with a lump. Check it now. It's gone. Completely. Yes, sir. The same way this disappeared, everything that must leave your life, I command that it leaves now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring you healing and perfection. Never returns in Jesus' name. Yes, please. My name is Moses William. I've been having migraine for three weeks now. And before I came here, it's as if my head, my head wanted to remove. I immediately you caught my grim. I fell under the power of the Holy Ghost outside. You were outside. Yes, sir. And now, now I'm free. Gone forever. Amen. Free today, free forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. Uh, let's just let us be the last person there. I'm so sorry. After Thank this, we'll now hold on. Don't drive them back. No, let them stand. I have to pray for them. All of look at the long queue right till outside. Look at what Jesus is doing here. Yes, please. Uh, praise God. My name is NSCDK. You mentioned my case. I was sitting outside there. That those you see have, the uh, outside people again? Uh, problem on the left leg. And I happen to have one. You have? Oh, I'm seeing. The yes. bandage. Yes. And I've been, what happened to you? Sincerely, I don't know. I went home. I came back. I started having the pains. Since then, it has really cost me so much. Where are you from? Well, I'm from Imo State, but I walked here. Okay. Mm. And you could not walk? No, I'm walking, but I spent too much on it. It refused to go? I know it will go. Uh -uh. Yeah. Answer me. Before now. Yes. What is it a boil? Is it what does is it a wound? I can't even say. That. Just pain like that. What I know I step on something. You step on something? Yes. Every demonic thing. Planted and programmed around your life. I call upon the God of heaven. He takes it out of your life now. My friend, look at me. I pray for you. This demonic thing, I curse it by the God of heaven. Amen. Now, Amen. in the name of Jesus, Amen. it dries up and that pain, that swelling, that discomfort leaves your life now and it leaves your life forever. Amen. Now, for all the so many miracles inside and outside and those of you who could not have the time to testify, Lord, we give you glory for it. We decree and declare that you will be glorified and for all of you who have received these miracles they remain permanent in your life yeah. and for those who you stood in for because some of you have sick people some in hospitals some in various places i agree with you right now that in jesus name you will return back and you will meet testimonies waiting for you yeah. hallelujah god bless you now please all of you you're going to stretch your hands now. There is a covenant of answered prayer. The Bible says, Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the most accurate representation of your desires. Even when we prophesy, we do so in part because we are limited. Even when we pray for the sick, the time will not even allow us to do justice to everyone as should be. But this is both a token of your faith, a representation of your expectation. Listen to me. There is a God that answers prayer. I have seen God answer prayers in remarkable ways. Um, I had the honor and the privilege some months ago to be alone in Baba Deboe's prayer room and while I was there I lay down the only thing I said was God the covenant of answered prayer that you have given this man through the years I respect and I honor that anointing let it also come upon me so that everyone I pray for and everyone I declare upon in addition to that which you have given upon my life let this grace speak and God had me 
You've heard me say I'm a product of many anointings. It is true. We are not the inventors of this grace. It's a relay. We also received it. Hallelujah. I have read through history. Many years ago, a man of God was going to pray for me who had had the opportunity of meeting with a few of the generals before they went to be with the Lord. And here's what he told me. He said, Smith Wigglesworth told Lester Sumro, he said, when you get old, make sure you do not die with this anointing. He said, find young men and transfer this grace unto them. We are recipients of this grace. Nobody invents the anointing. It's a relay. In one of my encounters, I had this man come to me in my vision and he was talking with me and I was listening. Profound wisdom. And when he turned, he was about leaving. I was calling him and I said, Sir, you did not tell me your name. And he stopped and turned back to look at me. And he said, Paul. Listen, I didn't always walk in the prophetic in this dimension. I'm a product of many anointings. But I will tell you one of the stories. One night, late in the night, I was watching William Branham. And it was an interview. And I was just soaking in the presence of God. You know, people have criticized the man castigated him, said all kinds of things because of a few limitations at the end of his ministry. And I, I saw the purity and the heart and the sincerity of that man. Most people will not stand for one year if they carry one tenth of the anointing that was on that man. They will not even have the stamina to stand. And I said, Lord, but this man, he served you with all his heart. And suddenly from the screen of my laptop, a cold sensation from that screen upon my head and it started going down over a period of 30 minutes and the moment that happened it just ceased by the next meeting I will go to the heavens opened in a strange way we have been given this baton also we are products of many anointings You get what I'm telling you? When your father, the bishop, stands here, he speaks so much about the Archbishop Benson Idahosa and the impact is had. Nobody invents this grace. Idahosa himself was a student of T.L. Osborne and a student of those who went ahead of him. Listen to me. I shared with you my encounter in the Reinhard Bonke Crusade. We are products of many anointings. In as much as I have met Jesus and I received an impartation directly from Him, it still did not stop the supplies of the body. This is why there is no boasting because all that you see today is an election of grace. We are getting into the next prophetic five or ten minutes to wrap up my session here. And I'm going to bow my knees like Paul said. For this cause I, Paul, I bow my knees to our Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And all I want you to do is to stretch your hands in agreement as we crush the gates of darkness. That everything your personal spiritual life could not fight, there is a covenant. You are the covenant keeping God. You are Let's stretch your 
stretch your hands towards this request and begin to declare that these Egyptians you see today that you will see them no more forever no you don't have to kneel please you just stand let me do the kneeling for you is someone praying open doors enlargement next levels lands territories spiritual fire There used to be a song many years ago. Every time we were in an attitude of prayer, we used to sing that song many years ago. It says, Ji Adu Wata, Ya Yesu, Bariku Kata, 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 Agree with me as I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is not your best. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I bow my knees before the God of my covenant. Oh, speak from the heavens. And the heavens will be Hear me. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God, I decree and declare every request tabled here before God, even upon this altar, we turn it from a request to an answer prayer. We turn it from a request to an answer prayer. Hear me. Anyone who says over his dead body for this request, may the earth open and swallow them. Every human agent that must be used by God to bring to pass the answers to this prayer, we compel them to respond now. Hear me? Every long standing issue that has refused to bow to the name of the Lord, right now we declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, it bows now. Hear me? For some of you, before you reach home, the answers here will reach home before you. Believe me. 
prophetically upon this request everything that has risen above you i bring it under your feet 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 when the fact god is for us then the good ever stop us then the fact god is with us what you do for me is after you pack all these requests there is no reading it god has read it you set them on fire somewhere and discard them please don't just put them in a bin just set it on fire to respect everyone's privacy but in the name of jesus i stand in faith with our bishop alongside the veterans of the gospel here represented as a united church over yola over adamawa over the east the northeast we decree and declare that every request here will never return as a request again <laughs> hallelujah praise the lord now please let me have your attention I want to do the impartation now. Listen. An impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. Listen. An impartation is not just laying on of hands. You can hands can be laid on you and nothing transferred to you. He said, The things that thou hast received from us, commit thou to faithful men who will commit to others also. Every time, listen carefully. There are three ways to receive impartation. Number one, directly from God through an encounter. Number two, there are results and impartations that come when you align with covenants. You don't have to meet the individuals. The covenants that represent the institution or the platforms that they are under, you can come under that covering and you receive certain levels of possibilities and impartations. But the third is when God gives you an opportunity and a privilege to encounter the careers of His grace in the office to downplay on the graces and the sacrifices that are here. There are bishops, apostles and prophets and some of you who were not even introduced, mighty battle axes scattered across, not potentially. God is even using you, maybe even greater than some of us. So standing here to minister does not necessarily mean the greatest or the best. It is an election of grace. And we must be matured and not ashamed to recognize this. But can I tell you this? You will never receive from a colleague. There has to be that spiritual potential difference. And without all contradiction, the Bible says, the less is blessed. These graces are not graces that we invented. We have so received from men and women who have gone ahead. Many years ago, I was preaching in a PFN crusade in Kano. And I called this woman out. I think she came to testify of a miracle she had received. She was speaking Hausa. And this woman was an intercessor. She finishes her Bible every 15 days. Ah, I've not done that one. I said, who is this? Hausa Bible, cover to cover. That one is a grace. I was almost kneeling down to say, before MOG destroys me, let me humble myself and receive first before I continue. Can I tell you, you know the grace walking by the testimonies that recycle around your life. Thou anointest my head with oil, but I see the result in what happens in my cup. You don't anoint my cup. If my cup is empty, don't blame the cup. It is what is on my head. If I want my cup to overflow, then what is on my head must overflow. 
Listen to me. Every possibility in this kingdom is governed by a grace dimension. There is a dimension of embracing and empowerment. Speed has a grace. The prophetic has a grace. Revelation and access to the mysteries of the spirit has a grace. Influence has a grace. Favor has a grace. That was the grace, the anointing that was upon Esther. And within the next five minutes before we round up, I know that our time is gone. But listen to me. I believe that God sent me here through the awesome invitation of the angel over this house and a father over many within this city, our bishop and his precious wife, that under this corporate anointing, if you believe, many of you have seen this day in dreams and visions. Many of you, the same way a doctor diagnoses a patient and says there is deficiency of calcium, we can know the deficiency by the inability to produce certain spiritual results. You are a man of God with a strong teaching grace, but there is no performance, no results in terms of signs and wonders. You are a man of God, grace with signs and wonders, but the opportunity, the access to wisdom to understand doctrine and communicate the same with intelligence is not there. Some of you are anointed in as much as ministry requires, but the fortitude for effective leadership is not there. Now please, all those under the anointing, you don't have to bring them out. But remember I told you, the Lord Jesus gave me an instruction. Everywhere I travel, there must be someone that that light that came from him to me. I am a product of many anointings. And within the next two, three minutes as we run, please open up your heart. And something is about to happen to you. Father, I stretch my hands joining faith with our bishop alongside the servants of God that are here represented. You have shown me mercy, you have shown me grace. I have tasted of this wine of the Spirit. And with it you have granted grace to work wonders for your name. I pray. I'm seeing an eagle. This is a representation of the prophetic. Right now, Everyone here who must drink of this wine, Kalis Sate Maratus Kavadia, the wine of the prophetic. Many of you here, those dimensions are virgin dimensions. Help them at the count of three inside, outside. Anyone here who should walk in the prophetic? One, Alaka two, three, take that grace, take that grace. I unlock the fountain of the prophetic. The eyes that see and the ears that hear. Take it now. Help this man. In the name of Jesus Christ. Take it inside, outside. The balcony, everywhere. In the name of Jesus Christ. The grace for speed is coming on people now. There has been delay and retrogression in ministry and in life. But in the name of Jesus, take the grace for speed. Help them please. Help this man. Take the grace for speed. Run like Elijah. Run like Elijah. Overtake the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. I take 10 years and I put it in one month. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now there are some of you here who are uniquely called into the ministry of signs and wonders. Supernatural manifestations of power. I'm seeing the number 24. 24 people. Lord, where are they? I stretch my hands at the count of three. May that grace from heaven rest upon you now. One, my God. Two, three. 
Take that drink. Take that drink. Take that drink. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are two men of God here. The minister stands. I'm seeing I just saw fire come upon you. The name of Jesus Christ. Help them, please. Help them. Take that drink. The spirit of revelation. Many of you have desired access to scripture. The opening of your eyes to see. Ay, 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 ay. I've seen many people drink of this wine. In the name of Jesus, take that grace now. The miracle of open eyes. Access to the mysteries of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. A depth of comprehension by the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Bishop, sir, with all due respect, I'm seeing our mother. I just saw oil being poured on the woman of God. I saw oil and the Lord told me that there is a grace for favor that is putting upon our mother and upon anyone she prays for. This is what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus, by the privilege of God's grace, let it be as declared by the mouth of the Lord that that grace and that unction for favor coming upon your mother in the Lord, the wife of our bishop, in addition to every grace that she carries, Ma, by the privilege of the election of grace I speak to you, may that oil truly come upon you. Now, you drink of that oil in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God. That grace. I want to pray for you. There are many of you that need to carry the grace. It takes favor also to experience enlargement. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. We're wrapping up. Exodus 3. Sir, you're a pastor here. I want to pray for you. The Lord is bringing speed to your life. Speed that before the end of 2021, sir, the things that you will do will even surprise you. And the Lord says he's bringing you to a season of reward. In the name of Jesus, speak to you, sir. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I empower your feet to run. In the name of Jesus, I empower your feet to run. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. In the name of Jesus Christ. Esther 321. Oh dear, I thought we had it projected. Please help us, our time is up. Read with me, please. One to read. And it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go. You know that there is favor in your life when your hand stops being empty. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. The kind of favor you have never seen. I stand in faith with our Father, the Bishop, and I declare, take that favor now. There are churches that will have land that you did not buy with your money. The God of heaven is arising to give it to you. You step into prepared blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ. And hear me. Every grace that you have seen. That your heart so desires. I stretch my hands. By the privilege of the election of grace. I decree and declare. Access to kings. Access to systems and structures. May that grace come upon you now. Everyone here who is saying, Apostle, I cannot leave this meeting without Jesus. While I heard you speak, I realize and I recognize that I need Jesus. Please, no movement. There are some of you outside, you are saying, Apostle, I came for this conference, now turned crusade, and I need Jesus. We have two minutes, our time is up. Please, if you are here, before I leave this city, I want to stand with you as we make that declaration for Jesus. I am going to count one to five. Those who are coming from outside, please allow them. In as much as they are coming just for salvation. 
I will count one to five. Run like there's fire on the mountain. You come and stand here right now. One. You are running to Jesus. Don't sit back. Let's celebrate them as they come. From inside, outside. You need Jesus. Two. Please stand up for space. Three, are you coming? Please rush, rush, rush quickly. Hallelujah. The power of sin and Satan. Come, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Nina Yesle Bazan Koma Bazan Koma Nina Yesle Bazan Koma Bazan Koma Come to Jesus, your Lord. He's calling you. He's giving you a new beginning. The Bible says, Whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. All of you who are standing here, and you who is following in your homes, following everywhere, there is an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. The Bible declares, For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Listen to me. I salute every one of you for making this bold declaration. I want you to lift your right hand high to heaven. Listen, you are not just reciting a poem. Jesus is here. And ensure that this decision you make is true, is lasting, is sincere. All of you who are here in front, shout this loud after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe in you. That you are the son of God. I receive Jesus. Tonight, as my savior, as my Lord, and as my king. I receive the abundance of grace. Even the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign forever. I am a recipient of the life of God. I declare that the power of sin, of Satan, of hell, of the grave is broken over my life. From today, I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. By the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. Father, I decree and declare, let this be a new beginning for these people. You will never return to yesterday again in Jesus' name. According to the authority of scriptures, you are recipients of eternal life. And from today until forever, in the name of Jesus, we call you sons and daughters of light. The grace to live victorious in your Christian life. May that grace be released upon you. Finally, I commend you to the ministry of the Spirit and the ministry of the Word for your establishment and your maturity in righteousness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. Is there anywhere they are going to or they return to their seats? Okay, now, I know there are a number of you. Where, where, what's the direction? Okay, now please, all of you here who came to make that declaration, I believe you will be given slips. All of you, make sure you collect a slip. You are going to feel it legibly. And then, are they returning back to their seats? Someone advise me. Okay, now all of you in concert, please move to my left, which is your right. Let's celebrate them as they go, all of them. There will be a few counselors who will receive you. Make sure you pick your slip on your way going.
Y'all have celebrated them. We're almost done. Very quickly, very quickly, celebrate them as they go. Hallelujah. Now, listen, please. Listen. Um, I know that I, I may not be able to see Bishop now because of the people, but I want you to know that I am honored and really blessed to visit Yola again and for this platform that the Lord has provided. I want to thank you sincerely, Bishop Sir, and your precious wife, alongside the team of elders, all of the people who have helped to make my stay a profitable one, even though a brief one. We had wonderful moments today with Bishop, and I want to appreciate every servant of God who has come here to honor this meeting, all who have come, politicians, thank you so, so much. Yola, I love you. May the Lord lift you. And all through the remaining part of this conference, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that it will be a build up from this and it will go from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. And for the members of this church particularly, in the name of Jesus, may you experience the grace of God. And listen, let me encourage you. Um, I just felt a need to do this. Please, I know that there are several people who have come from different places. It's usually not my culture to do this, but I want to encourage you. I want you to ensure and to see to it that your seed is part of this conference. Already, I know what God has told me to sow. As